are once again for another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew 5th ed D&D campaign. Uh, I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, the host and GM. I'm the one responsible for all the technical problems, well, usually. Uh, I take I claim responsibility for all bugs and machines. How's that? Is that fair? That, that, I'll take that burden on. Uh, this is the alt campaign where we are, uh, in fact, I realize I just, I put the wrong title up because <laughs> this is the great confusion and that seems terribly appropriate, an alt campaign from the main campaign where we have, uh, three players and they are playing in the mysterious seaside town of Eilthwater on the western coast of Eskus in the drowned coast. The drowned coast, the drowned lands, the drowned something or other. It's all wet. It's around everything. It's everything. Uh, I've already introduced myself, but now my players will do so, beginning with Silas. Uh, my name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh, uh, illusionist, who's currently covered in poison. Somewhat. Hi, I'm Marie. I play Annie, who is not covered in poison, but is annoyed about being in water. Hey, I'm Max, and I'm playing a Medrek, half-orc cleric, who is also annoyed at being in water <laughs> and feeling rather naked without his armor and 19 AC. <laughs> uh, not literally naked, just soaking wet yeah. and feeling somewhat, naked. somewhat covered in, in poison goo. Well, let's catch up. Goo, poison, <laughs> slime, <laughs> uncleanliness. <laughs> it's been, you know, it's not the cleanest of places for it's, it's been a land day. dwellers. It's been a day. <laughs> Let us recap what happened in the previous session. The group descended below the waters after mooring their boat to one of the many sharp shoals on the edge of the dead man's fingers. Nearby, they found a broken ship in the water, piled around the shoal and sunken a while ago, with the name Daylight Grace carved on the side. Making their way towards the direction the Star Rock compass pointed, they discovered a vast field of thick, sticky, and poisonous sea seaweed. After getting too close and dang entangling themselves in it, they discovered large air bubbles floating up from within the center of the field and made their way clumsily through them, finding some sort of natural vent in a stony surface below that opened and released air. With a trusty crowbar in hand, they managed to force open the vent and dive within. A small cave glowed slightly from leafy underwater vegetation that seemed to give off air. On closer inspection, the cave was made by tools, not nature, and two stone doors were discovered, each with solid metal handles at their bases. Within minutes, the room nearly cleared of water as more and more air was forced in and forced the water through cracks in the walls. With a bit of work and the trusty crowbar once more, they forced open one of the two doors, revealing a new chamber. As water splashed into that chamber, three sets of sea devil eyes looked back at them. And we'll go right to the map so you can see what's going on. Uh, now, um, Marie, you, you weren't able to run roll 20 at the same time. Is that still the case today? Yo. Okay. Just I, so. I can have it. I just can't move it or actually use it to roll. It just freezes my entire computer. It's not really having it at that point, I think. Uh, I, I can still see it. <laughs> fair enough. So uh, again, I can still point places. I will, I will, I will move your 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 tokens as necessary. Then myself, uh, as mentioned, uh, and those are taking forever to come up. As mentioned, uh, you see within this room three more of the sea devils you faced before. <coughs> A quick description of them: they are humanoid. Uh, but with reptilian features covered in uh, a, a tough, leathery skin, wearing uh, small things that could be considered clothing, but they aren't fully covered, uh, more like bandoliers and uh, uh, places where pockets or bags can be attached. They are armed, uh, each with a, uh, a uh, small trident. Actually, only one of them has a small trident, I should say, in this case, the one labeled Sea Devil Three. Uh, they have, actually, I wrote a description down for these guys. Where did it go? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I will, I will check my notes quickly as I, here's a dangerous thing, writing notes in five different places. 
Uh, let's see. They have large dorsal fins or a ridge on their back running down all their all their back from the top of the head all the way down to a short tail. They have large, wide mouths with many small, razor-like teeth. And upon spotting the door opening, they are looking over at you with some confusion. There's an opportunity here. What would you like to do? You're in a very narrow hallway, and the room open up and ahead of you seems to have a similar um, column in the roof, or column that runs to the roof, I should say, similar to the room you were just in. So they're not attacking, they're just looking at us confused? They look a little surprised. You have, I believe, you did you start up another pebble of light? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Then you have uh, a brilliant light that's sort of centered on you. You can only see them kind of in shadow a little bit. Oh. Hello? Are, are you going to speak? Is that is that your... <laughs> it's up to you. I, 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 yeah. The situation has sort of become rapid. Both sides are a little bit surprised. But I'm giving you an opportunity to try to do something if you wish. You can choose to attack, to speak, to flee, I suppose. Silas is like, what's going on? You yeah, guys are in front of him and he's shorter than you, so he can't see. Yeah. We're here to take the rock and transport it elsewhere. So you choose to speak. Are you going to try to intimidate them? Or are you trying to... How are you presenting yourself? Convince them that... were sent by their superiors to carry the rock someplace else. <laughs> okay. Uh, make a persuasion roll at disadvantage. Persuasion is not very good, but oh well. And that was the better of the, or that was the first of two rolls. Oh, it's not doing the... Oh, right, okay. Yeah, because you're just rolling manually. Unfortunately, eight was right. the lower, although it wasn't going to get much better than that. Uh, as you call out to them, and, and uh, how do you physically represent yourself? Are you wildly gesturing? Are you pointing? Are you raising a fist? Or are you kind of just speaking? Just speaking while trying to appear big, because if, we're, if we look intimidating, then the odds that they'll believe us are slightly better. Okay. Although after that roll, probably not. <laughs> so you're waving. You've got the spear um, that you picked up from the Sea Devil before, the one that has the yeah. strangely light feeling, the coral spear. And, yeah, the Warhammer. It was a Warhammer. Uh, or sorry, Warhammer, right, in this case, uh, which is more of a, a it's longer and a little heavier on the end than the spear would be. Uh, and you start calling out to them. And the one up front, the one with the darker green skin, kind of looks, and you can see his eyes kind of... Uh, kind of narrowing down to almost slits. You can see the the sort of deep green yellow uh, pupils inside as his head kind of turns to one side, and he he uh, he mutters something. And then you realize they may not understand a word you said. Um, he levels his uh, sorry. He doesn't have a spear, uh, but he he kind of raises his hands up defensively uh, and. Uh, call something over his shoulder to the one behind him, the one with the sort of tawny skin, uh, who then uh, responds and steps over and uh, steps to this door. The third one steps over here and holds up the spear. You can see this one is a little bit bigger than the other two. It's actually wearing... Uh, uh, it actually uh, actually wearing a slight amount of armor, and seems to be leveling a uh, a trident. Um, and none of you can understand a, a, a sound that they're making at all. Hey Silas, can you make out anything of what they're saying? No. <laughs> Did it sound anything like, go get help? 
I don't think they believe my story. You can make an insight check. Probably didn't. Um, Silas, you now can clearly hear from within the room at least two voices. I mean, they're they're similar guttural kind of warbling language, which probably comes... You, you gather, uh, Silas, that this language probably carries better underwater. Yeah. Can we all make insight checks or just me or Silas? Uh, you can all make insight checks if you'd like. Oh my god. <laughs> the dice is against me today, clearly, too. Clearly, they're pre prepping for an attack. Because they look like they're trying to surround you. It doesn't make any sense, but... Um, okay. Okay. Although I can't directly see them. You can't so. see them, but it's, it's more from the, the tone of voice. Yeah. And Annie, can you roll? or Nine. Nine? Okay. So, uh, Annie, you're, you're concerned. <clears throat> There's a couple of voices from the darkness are ahead of you. You can't really see them, uh, and they seem urgent to you. Um, for you, I'm Silas... I'm kind of behind the wall anyway, so I can't see the second one. Right. Or the right. first one. I mean, the voices are kind of off in the distance yeah. and not really sure. Uh, Silas, for you, there's a sense of, of confusion. Uh, there's a sense of, of surprise. There's a sense of defensiveness, actually, more from the voices. Uh, in other words, they, they seem to be ready to, uh, if you will, defend themselves. Hmm. I think they're scared of us. Good. Should I make pace out of them? Um, I don't know. If we could get this non-violently, that would be better. The one that yeah. uh, has the trident kind of steps a little bit forward cautiously. I'll raise my hand too then. And I like violence normally, but it's like... Without the armor, I'm not as good as violent as I normally am right now. <laughs> uh, you do get the sense of being somewhat boxed in, however. Yeah. I'll show him hmm. the light rock, and I'll point at it. This. The big one like this that's brighter. Can you take us to it? Again, there's not a lot of language they seem to understand, or at least not what you're saying. Um, you see a look pass between the two of them, the one up front kind of lowering his head a little bit to look up at the, the thing, mutter something to the other one. The other one uh, mutters something back. There's a third voice off in the distance, uh, higher pitched, maybe a little bit more urgent. But then the one with the trident steps forward one more step, this this time lowering the trident to chest level, level, aimed directly at you. It points the trident at you, it points the trident at the, the light that you have, and it points the trident at the ground briefly, and then back up leveled at you. I think he's saying to drop the rock, but... I don't Is know. He you drop the rock? I can put it on the floor. I mean, it's still going to work. Mm -hmm. Might I'll go well. a little closer to him so other people can, like, follow inside more. And I'll okay. put the rock on the ground at my feet. Okay. And point to it, like, yeah, yeah, the rock. Where's the bigger one? And I'll make, like, a big motion with my hands, like, approximately how big the uh, star used to be. The one with the trident leveled at you watches you carefully and kind of mutters something. The green one slinks down to the ground, their reptilian bodies kind of able to, to shuffle and, and shape uh, in a much more uh, curved way than human bodies could ever do, and then cautiously reaches out towards the bright light on the ground. Puts its hand up to and grabs onto the, the glowing rock. and pulls the glowing rock back to itself, holding it in its palm, looking at it with some, some surprise and some wonder, um, mm. uttering something to the other. 
Maybe they don't have magic like that here. You've noticed that there aren't any lights down here. Other than a slight glow from the, the uh, plants and from the rocks. They both back up from you. Mm -hmm. And the one with the trident waves the trident in toward the room. Like a, as an emotion to like make us go in? You kind of like gather that's what they're getting at, yeah. Okay, well, go in a little further. I'll follow. Okay. I'll go right here. Okay. You see the, the deep green one was holding on to that stone of light, handed over to the lighter skinned one who takes it with some reverence, then utters something. The lighter skinned one tugs at the handle of the door you can now see standing in front of. There's a clicking sound, and the door behind you slams shut. This one, uh, this okay. one here opens, and it rushes on through. The green one moves in to stand by the door. Mm. Something real quick. You are now in the dark. Those of you without dark vision can see nothing. Just a the mm. weirdest thing probably is that you actually notice a slight glow from Medric. It's not enough to see by. It's like a faint candle glow. I'm going to like grab onto the back of Medric's shirt. Okay. It's warm to the touch. Medric, you feel hands grab from behind you and realize it's Annie. Yeah. What do you do? My package is here. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> I, was trying, I was looking if um, like if the light object gets too far away from me, if it stays lit, I guess it does. It doesn't say anything about it stopping. I, yeah, it's, it's just an effect, I think, that stays on it. Yep. Yeah, it just glows for like 10 minutes, an hour, or whatever. Yeah, an hour. Whatever it is. Yeah. Wonder what'll happen if you make another one glow. The other one would extinguish. It's not concentration, I don't think, unless it says in the spell. Nope. No. It just says I can only only have one object. Which ah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. What do you do? So, uh, You're sitting in the dark. You can hear uh, a, a a little. Bloop, bloop, bloop. In front of you, as you kind of realize that the plants are still generating air, the room I'll seems to be slant, so that way the other object stays lit. Okay. And we can still see something. Like I'm assuming it, the light would be diminished. Uh, produce this flame way. produces. I think it's torchlight. Is it a physical flame or? Uh, it is a physical yeah. flame. Okay. What does it look like? When you do it, where do you do it? it do you do it in like hand, that. or? Yeah, it would just be like in the palm of my hand. Okay. If the camera's lagging. I'm doing a palm of my hand motion, but I'm not moving on camera. Oh, oh here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta hold Lag. out your hold out your hand, and a flame appears uh, in yeah. your hand. Uh, it would of... look like a little more dim than usual because we're underwater. Well, there's no water in here. Remember, this is a a, a, oh. a, a space with air in it. Gotcha. Okay, uh, so that would just look like a regular fire. Small fire. Uh, yep, so it's it's a bright light in 10 feet radius and dim light for additional 10 feet. So it actually will light up this room pretty well. Um, there is a bit of a shadow off to the uh, off to your right as that, that sort of ridge in the center, or column in the center, which, which uh, heads up to... You can see now above you, and kind of notice the, there's another uh, sphincter like in the other room, so... Uh, this room also probably does, at some point, uh, flood uh, and the air rush out. Yeah. Uh, you look over, and uh, so the, there's a bright light in front of you, uh, which causes some sort of warbled gasps from the green one you can see in front of you, who has his hand on the handle of the door and yanks it downward with a click at the very bottom uh, and utters something... Uh, to uh, to the room, which you presume is actually to the other one. There's a sound of a uh, of stones moving on stones, small stones but heavy ones, sort of like clunk, 
and then you can uh, hear the uh, bubbling, rushing sound as the air in the room is being exchanged for water. The sphincter, mo sphincter overhead is open. Correct. The room floods with water in seconds. Uh, I, I take a quick breath. Does your flame... A flickering flame. Yeah, I'm going to say with, as the water rushes over it, the flame in your hand goes out. Okay. Uh, now you're in the darkness once again and soaking wet. Uh, Annie, you take a deep breath of, of air and then kind of as, as the water starts to cover over you, you kind of feel the little... Uh, the little um, uh, sharp pain from underneath your tongue where the uh, pearl of uh, water, pearl of air is still is still functioning, still breathing for you, or still breathing out for you. What do you do now? Dang it. Um, I'll try to produce another flame underwater, see if that works, maybe like... <laughs> okay. It flickers, have... it flickers up, but it's, it goes out almost instantly. Curses. For something like Produce Flame, where it's only a cantrip, you know that it's it's actual fire, but it's magically sustained and can be extinguished. For larger things, maybe like a fireball maybe could function underwater, but even that would be reduced. Yeah. I'll Before I pick up another like small rock to cast light on that i'll look at the uh, sea devils are they are they doing anything the one by the door just seems to be standing there with his back to the door he's got his hands out again kind of defensively you can see the the wicked long claws uh its mouth is open just slightly kind of uh, eyeing you and, and watching you more or less um you still don't see the other one it's behind the the column on the other side uh, Silas, you can kind of make out the the sounds of it moving every once in a while, especially as the water comes up and the sound is conducted a bit better. It seems to be shifting back and forth. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, walk over here then. Okay. Because these guys did kidnap someone too, so yeah, uh, we got to get moving. Okay. The chamber fills with water again, and you can you can kind of hear the end of that rush of air that goes through the sphincter, which closes once more. And now little bubbles are appearing as the uh, plants once again uh, emit uh, a, quite a remarkable amount of of air from small bubbles underneath their their uh, their fronds. You stand in front of this one, and you can see that uh, it is still holding the the trident and kind of watching. And as you move closer. It holds the trident flat out, preparing to attack. Okay. I'm going to cast fear on the two of them. From where you are, you can only see one of them. The column is in the in the in the way. But you can cast okay, fear on the one don't. in front of you. No. Okay. What's in the clutter behind the sea devil one, behind the green one? You can't see like it very well. You can definitely make out the slightly glowing plants, but you could you would have to move closer to really see much detail, especially in the sort of flickering light from the uh, the flame you keep producing and then it goes away. Right. Yeah, I'll move closer and look at that stuff. Okay. So first, I'll, as I walk ahead, do they do anything? That one is watching you closely, and but seems to be staying in front of the door. Uh, and as you move there, uh, your foot crunches down on something uh, rough, and you realize that tucked in behind all of these plants are a pile of bones. Okay. Moving that closely seems to make it feel like it's an aggressive move. And the one in front of you will be preparing for an attack. Let's roll initiative. My... Okay, I need to. Uh... That is a two on the dice, so ten. Ten. Okay. Just didn't get a. Still learning all the shortcut codes. Uh... 
I have there not rolled above a ten yet. That one. That one. Your total was ten. Ten. Oh, no. All right. Things are running a little slow here. Medric got eight. Yep. Silas got six. Um, Even if I had rolled a one, I would have go before you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> Hopefully the monsters roll low, too. Let's see if I can get them to roll at all. Everything is super slow all of a sudden. Something rolled. Ah. One, one of them got a shitty roll. One of them got a terrible roll. Alright. There's that guy. Guy. Oh, hey, they both did roll. Okay. Uh, Medric's eight didn't stick for some reason. <laughs> I can roll again. In case no, no, I, I, I have to put it in manually anyway. All right, so let's. Uh, oops, let's let's do this. Okay. Like a well-oiled machine made out of cottage cheese. Okay. <laughs> uh, the one in front of uh, Silas. Here's the other's cry of alarm and concern. Uh, and you can see his face turn from uh, concern and fear to determination. Uh, and he lances forward with his... Uh, yeah, it's going to say Warhammer here because I didn't change that particular sheet. But it's actually the... A, uh, a trident, a small light trident. Uh, 14 to hit. Uh, yeah, that hits. Uh, as the, it's actually piercing as well because it's, I should really change that. Uh, as the, uh, the trident is thrust forward uh, once and then twice. Ooh, and a crit. So, seven piercing for the first hit, and nine piercing for the second. Uh, as it uh, smoothly moves through the water, stabbing towards you, uh, you feel the first hit kind of uh, catch you a little off guard and kind of scrapes across your left arm, leaving a bloody trail in the now water-filled room. As you kind of move your arm back, the other one catches you solidly in the chest, and you can kind of feel the sharp... Uh, ends of this weirdly sharpened coral uh, kind of dip in and kind of rake out as uh, your chest uh, is pierced by this uh, this sudden hit. Uh, there's blood in the water now. And I'm going to add uh, trident. Silas so gurgles some. Uh, let's see. Annie, you're up. You can hear the fighting going on now, but it's still extraordinarily dim. Yup. Um, I am going to... Um, I have nothing that I can create light. Um, so I'm just going to follow the slight shine of Medric. Okay. And go here, hopefully. Okay. Yep, you can kind of move forward. Uh, you can sense the uh, the sea devil beside you, mm -hmm. uh, kind of instinctually. Uh, if you want to attack, uh, you're also underwater anyway, so it would be a disadvantage. But uh, it's disadvantage also because you can't see them. Yep, uh, I wouldn't have disadvantage because I'm attacking with a rapier. A fair um, point, but, but yes, you can't see them, so <laughs> it works out. Yep. Oh, what? The nineteen and a fifteen. Okay. Uh, that is a hit. Yeah. So total of a uh, twenty with a rapier. So that is no sneak attack damage because I have disadvantage. But that is an eight damage on the die. So that is eleven. Nice. 
uh, as you stab in towards the the one kind of thinking about it uh, in in some ways some of the, the the weird training you've had to go through there's parts of it which are you know if you get attacked in a blind alley and you don't know where the attacker exactly is you know how to kind of stab out with the knife or stab out with the rapier rather and sweep it in the area uh, and you hear with satisfaction, I suppose it would be satisfaction, uh, and feel the, 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 the tense of, tensing of the rapier as it, as it bends slightly. And you get this uh, sense of hitting, having hit something so solid, and there's a sort of acrid, coppery taste in the water, which you realize may very well be blood. Medrick. Gross. There's a dude right next to me. Yep. How bad does he look now? I mean, it's difficult to say because it's dark in here, but right. you can hear a sort of gurgle grump from that direction, and you kind of also f taste the, the sort of weird, coppery, uh, probably blood in the water. Also, he can see in the dark. Yep. Oh, yeah. Sorry. He's <laughs> the only me. one of us that can see anything. <laughs> Remind me if you have dark vision, because I do forget that from time to time. I forget especially for... For Medric. So yeah, you can see quite quite clearly as Annie sort of uh, stabs out into the darkness, uh, connecting solidly with the creature in front of you, who seems uh, annoyed and concerned at the same time. But well, now it's, gonna, it's about determined. to get more concerned because I'll grab the warhammer with two hands and swing right for right for its face. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> it's just as the the, uh, the the rapier punctures into its arm. And it kind of reels back just as you kind of go for a big, massive swing right over its head. Thankfully, over Annie's head as well, because you're a bit taller than her. I forget, is light a bonus action, or can it be used as a bonus action? No. No. There's very few cantrips or bonus actions. In that case, a spiritual weapon will appear right behind oh, yeah. the uh, C level 3. All right. So you're going to cast it behind you. Okay. Right here. Where did I put your spiritual weapon? That's a rowboat. I found a rowboat. <laughs> <laughs> I think I put it in. Yeah, I put it in with your uh, with your with the characters. Uh, for some reason, everything has gotten super slow. I probably should have rebooted. And that one's gonna get. Magically shanked by the spiritual weapon. Okay, just a second as I put it in place. And uh, what I will do is I will give you uh, access to it so you can move it yourself. Perfect. Eventually. Okay, uh, controlled by... There you go. So you should have access to move it in a second. Okay, let me know if you can move it. Just so that we can check that out. Yep. Perfect. And yes, the fiery weapon, uh, magical spiritual fire, uh, sweeps out towards the uh, the one in front of you. Ah, where is? Ah, I really need a mouse. <laughs> Note to self: deliver mouse to Max. No, I just don't have, don't have like the space for a mouse in, but on this desk. No, to self, right, so let's deliver a bigger desk to Nats. Ten? Is it ten? Does it ten hit? Unfortunately, it sort of clatters off its slump, slightly armored hide. Um, yeah. So, unfortunately, it misses. Uh, let's see, Silas here. We had the rest, right? Pardon? So, our hit points, we, we had the chance to use hit dice, right? Yeah, we yep. did. Yep. Yeah, we were all back to full. You should be, yeah. Yeah, you had a chance to rest in the other room. I just right now, so. <laughs> uh, that was a pretty nasty hit that uh, Silas just took. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, Silas, you see the thing in front of you is now a little bit more concerned, perhaps, with the fiery weapon that's burning underwater that seems to be trying to, to batter it to death. What would you like to do? Hmm. I am going to cast Quadruplication... Oh, geez. Okay. And make three more of me. Okay. And then I'm going to cast the uh, Enchanted Staff and get ready for next turn. Let's see if we can 
just put an icon on that one, but everything is just being difficult. <laughs> like, I can't move the map over to see all the icons. <sighs> it's a nice program. It just, um, there we go. That's what I wanted. So we'll have that for you to remember. And you, sorry, you, you're casting that and then? And then I'm casting Shillelagh. Ah. Uh, on which weapon? My staff. Okay. Uh, the staff glows with a, uh, a dark greenish uh, light. Uh, and now feels empowered in your hands. That is uh, action and bonus. Do you want to move? Mm -hmm. That's it for me. Okay. Uh, this guy, surrounded by two people, um, but sees hmm, flaming guy as probably the more dangerous of the two. Uh, will strike out with a claw. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to strike out a claw at the one with the Warhammer. It was clicked. It will take some time. There it goes. Oh, oh wow. but it's it totally misses. off off balance. My 10 AC, it missed. <laughs> it did. It did about as badly as it can. Uh, and snarls wow. and uh, snaps at, uh, at Annie. So it will try to bite. Does a 19 hit? Uh, yes, yes, it does. Uh, as it sort of clamps down on your retreating arm with the rapier, um, you feel the first the piercing bite, and then a little sizzle around the bite. As you notice, especially up close, this this close at least, uh, <laughs> the the uh, sort of black goop that crawls across its skin, and the black goop burns when it hits. That's its turn. It's not moving. It doesn't have any other thing to do. Uh, the other one will take a slash at, and hey, it has a trident now. Take a slash at the uh, spiritual weapon, which it manages to slash right through, and then howls with anger, and then tries one more time. This time uh, connecting with nothing but the wall. It seems to be utterly occupied with that for the moment. Annie, you're up. Oh, oh. Um, well, I'll make another go with my rapier. Okay. You can feel the sort of sting and burn on your arm as you stab out with a rapier and? That is a 12. Uh, a 12 one. hits. Ooh. This, guy's, this one does not have any armor on. Nice. Uh, four, five, six, seven damage. Nice. As you stab inward to it. Uh, you hit it last time. Why is that not reflected? Something got reset here. Just a second. Mm -mm -mm. Shoot. Do you remember how much damage you did last time? It did not record. Uh, I did max, so it was 11. 11. Okay. I thought it was a lot. Uh, with that stab, uh, you kind of lunge a little bit further forward, kind of aiming in the same direction, but its head is a lot closer. And you feel the, the the sword buckle slightly as it hits the outer skin, and then flex uh, as you uh, you can tell that it went deep into its shoulder. It gurgles and howls with anger, uh, and yeah, uh, it's there in front of you. You can sense its desperation and anger. For you, Medric, you can see now that it's it's uh, bleeding profusely. Its shoulder seems to be stiffened up. Uh, and it seems to be looking back and forth, trying to figure out what to do. At this point now, the, the air in the room has started to fill about a foot and a half from the ceiling. Good. Well, I, I know exactly what it's going to do. It's my turn. Okay. Yep. So again, I will two-hand the Warhammer and swing for the fences, or I mean for the faces. <laughs> Specifically its face, not Annie's. And that is a hit. Woo! As it moves, and the thing is, you realize it's it's moving so well through the water itself. Uh, it's got this weird balance to it, this weird openness to the head of it. Uh, the coral, the way that it's shaped, just seems to move smoothly through the water. And I you like collect, this. connect Underline. solidly with the side of its head. What kind of uh, damage the, do you do? I add my strength bonus plus, profi plus proficiency, right? Not proficiency. Oh. <sighs> 
Not for the damage, no. Okay. Crack. All right. As you clock it side in the side of the head, uh, it uh, gives out a, a loud warble, and then kind of wavers in the water, and then just sort of hangs. You realize it is dead. And the spiritual weapon will take a stab at jerk with the trident. Trident jerk. <laughs> That's a hit. As a spiritual weapon, mirroring your own action, swings through, aiming for the head, collecting, ah. connecting in the side of the head. Oh, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, not uh, not doing it. Connect, connecting, but it's got a weird sort of helmet cover that seems to prevent Monk. it from burning too badly. At least I got its attention. I hope. Uh, well, it seemed to have it. You seemed to have its attention before. Silas. Um, I am going to club it in the back of the head. Okay. Ooh. The shillelagh, the shillelagh staff, glowing green through the water, moves and smacks it in the back of the head pretty heavily, actually. Uh, 11 damage. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. shillelagh. I keep forgetting That's about maximum. that. maximal. Yeah. Uh, as the uh, as it here sort of crack and you can see that the helmet is really forward facing. It doesn't have a lot of rear coverage, and you catch it right in that spot between. Well, it's kind of all neck in some ways, but on that upper part of the spine where the the frond, the red frond, kind of uh, kind of uh, 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 connects, and you connect solidly with the back of its head. It lets out a a loud warble. That revenates, uh, revenates, resonates in this small room. Still stands, however. Anything else? You can move, or you can bone this. Nope, that's it for me. All right. Um, despite the 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 flaming element from it, it's going to try to strike out. Actually, at you and at it. So, firstly, it strikes at the flaming uh, element to try to keep it away. The flaming hammer. It misses, probably because it's so distracted. And then spins and try to stab behind it to uh, to Silas. And you're easily able to move out of its way. As it seems to be caught in now in desperate situations. Annie. Hello. The thing hangs um, limply in front of you. I can see the glow of the hammer, right? You can like see... It's not a light that emanates, but it, there's a bit of a glow. There's a bit of a glow. It's behind a pillar, so you're really only seeing a little bit of glow from that direction. Uh... I will swim that way. And can I share the, the a square with it? You've you've seen it before, and you know it's a it, well. Typically, it's friendly. If someone else uses the same flaming hammer, that might not be good. But yes, you can move through friendly squares, and it would be considered okay. friendly. But but like size wise, can I like go share its square for a second to be able to attack it? Uh, you you wouldn't be able to stay there. You'd have to move out afterwards. Because it's yep. kind of occupying the square, but you could stay there for a moment. Yep. Um, I would like to uh, go there. Okay. And kind of using the the flame as a guide, I'll say you can actually see it next to you. You can see can now see that it. it's desperately swinging back and forth with the trident. Uh, you kind of recognize this wild look in its eyes, as though uh, it's. Uh, Desperate. Actually, should have had advantage against uh, against uh, Silas. I, I didn't roll that one. Oh well. Uh, but it is desperate at the moment. Uh, well, can... I will try to hit it with my rapier then. Okay, you're not at disadvantage because you can see it. Hmm? You're not at disadvantage because the the light from the hammer because you're right next to it gives you just enough. Yep. Uh, it's a nine, so fourteen. Fourteen Seven. is a hit. Cool. And Silas is beside him. So I get mm -hmm. my, my sneak attack. You do. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, right. That is uh, 11 for the sneak attack and 6 for the damage. Ooh, okay. Um, 6, you, 5, and 6. You kind of <laughs> watching your time. You can, the, the hammer spinning overhead. It's got its, attach, uh, its attraction, attention. 
Uh, you can see it kind of swing upward with the the uh, trident to try to block the the hammer flying around, taking a, a, a brief stab backward at Silas. And as it takes that brief stab backwards, you lunge inward and catch it right up underneath the arm in a less than armored place. And you can feel the the rapier sink into it nearly all the way to the hilt. You withdraw quickly, and a thin line of greenish black blood uh, flows out behind it. It twitches turns and it seems like it's going to lunge to you towards you and then it kind of gushes a bit of blood out of its mouth and then sort of floats there hanging it is dead stabby stab nice job considering that I can't see shit Dusty's robe kind of cool <laughs> I'll pick up another rock and cast light again thank you Okay. Uh, you reach down and pick up a rock, cast light, and realize it's a finger bone. Well, close enough. It and you can see job. now there's a, a pile of, of humanoid bones that have been picked clean over years. Uh, perhaps dozens of bodies. Hey guys, there's, bone, there's uh, bones over here. Silas ties his coat tighter try to keep more of his blood in <laughs> uh, um, and then he's gonna go look at the door <clears throat> I'll investigate what's in the bone pile like is there any anything valuable like maybe jewelry or something okay you make an investigation but both of you actually make investigation rolls uh, Medrick you can easily see that uh, as uh, Silas is moving through the water uh, he is kind of leaving a red trail behind him. Um, hey, Silas, how bad up are you? Silas uh, bends over and probably would have collapsed if he wasn't floating in the water. It's like, not good. Because he got a natural one on his investigation, so. <laughs> yeah, the... Uh, you, may you, I make an investigation roll as well, like go over and help with this? What are you helping with? Like, I, I'd like to, to help look for stuff as well. Okay, so you move over towards the bone pile. Yeah. And he's probably a better investigator than I am. <laughs> Medrick, you're, you're, you're looking down, and it's like bones and bones and bones, and they've been picked clean. You see little little uh, <laughs> jagged scrapes across all of the bones and, and uh, kind of get this impression that those same sharp, uh, pointy teeth that you saw kind of grinning and snapping at, uh, at both of you probably nod pretty heavily on all of these and it kind of throws you for a moment then you kind of look up and see uh, uh, Silas at this weird angle kind of trying to sort of swim down towards the bottom of the door and having to kind of lean with the staff on the wall weirdly enough to uh, to even keep in motion and you can see there's, yeah, he's there's, gonna get some heels. there's blood underneath his uh, coat that's kind of pooling out and around in this ghastly sort of cloud uh, what did I you actually get on... rolled a natural 16, so that is 17. Nice. Uh, as you're poking through these uh, these I mean, bones... I'm behaving now. <laughs> One of uh, them is in jail. Ah, behave. you've taught them a lesson. Exactly. Um, using the, the, the rapier a little bit to kind of help to spread little things, it also helps to clean off the rapier. Um, something in the uh, light finger the finger light that uh, Medrick has created uh, kind of catches your eye and you kind of stab the rapier through and, and whip it back up and you find what looks like a golden ring. It's inset with uh, three jewels, a red jewel, a blue jewel, and a clear jewel. You can make a history check if you'd like. Ooh. Silas gets seven HP back. Thank you. Mm, kind of slap your hand on his shoulder. A 16, so history. That would be a 19. 19. Right. Um, looking at it, it, it is very definitely of Alarian make, uh, as in the island of Alaria, not just the, the kingdom. Uh, it, you look inside and you can make out just the tiniest little signature. Uh, and you're kind of looking at it and realizing that it is actually a stamp of a uh, particular jewel smith 
uh, uh, from the island of Alaria, a well-known jewel smith, smith uh, named uh, Farren. F A R R E N. Is that Robert Farren? Sure. We're here to have our. Now we're here to be happy. His his uh, nickname is Mick. Um. Sure, it's Robert Farron, a well-known blacksmith on Alaria, <laughs> who uh, who uh, produces uh, work almost exclusively uh, as uh, um, on royal commission, essentially. So whoever held this ring probably had a royal commission. Well, I will put this ring on. Okay, it's a little big for your finger, you find. Uh, you kind of end up having to probably put it on uh, the thumb to really get it to fit. So whoever's hands, whoever was wearing this had big hands. Is that another uh, uh, healing metric? But no, that was uh, fire damage. Because if I heal somebody else, right? Mm. Uh, yes, although you find with the water surrounding you, the damage is uh, is essentially nullified. Okay, I'll get back to full then. <laughs> Only they heal people up. when you're in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> so they you said they produce up stuff almost exclusively for the royal family? By royal commission. By, by royal commission. Basically, the, they've been designated as a, a chosen supplier for royal gifts. Cool. Uh, and as Medric kind of whoosh lights up the room a little bit with a flash of healing and then whoosh does it again and you realize the flames don't seem to burn as much because you're deeply buried in the water although at this point uh, the water is now three feet from the ceiling so almost only five feet from the ground and some of you are starting to be able to put your heads out of the water and uh, this would be a contemporary person uh, yes they are making things now cool what'd you find a ring that probably shouldn't be here. You think the ring is worth at least a hundred gold? Maybe That's more. Oh, yeah. Probably more to the right person. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if the other guy's coming back. The pebble I was holding is probably is not lit anymore. Probably. Uh, I will stand over the corpse of the other, or, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna stand right, like, at the door. Okay, I'm just gonna move the corpse so it's not in the way. Yeah. Um, I'll stand at the door and I will, um, hold an action. If the door opens, I, I'm gonna stab. Okay. So um... while we, just while we, we try to decide what's going on. Um, so the water is going down? The water is being forced out of the room in the similar process to what you had in the other room, where the air slowly accumulates in this room. Okay. Then I'm gonna... Well, I'm gonna rest until... Unless they decide that we're going through the door. So. Okay. My uh, multiple image wears off, too. Or do we have time for a rest again? Or? You have no idea. No, we probably don't, but uh, if we're waiting for the water to go down, then I'm, I'll take our... I, I'll just rest while we're waiting, but... Uh, well, we noticed earlier how they opened the door, like which way they moved the handles. Mm hmm So we should be able to get this door open fairly easily. Gonna give it Might a try. not open until the room is cleared, though. Right couple of minutes pass. The water is now uh, only about uh, three and a half feet from the floor. Might as well open the door now. Okay. Go over yeah. and give a, a tug on the door. Make a strength yep. check for me, please. Is Annie going to be helping out with her trusty crowbar? I can help with the crowbar. So make it an advantage. Uh, I asked Silas if he can be ready to smack something if, it come, if there's anyone on the other side of the door. Sure, he'll stand up, uh, 
still in a little pain, but uh, yeah, he'll charge up his weapon just in I'm case. And the crowbar helps. <laughs> okay, so 17 so is the highest? Yep. Yep. As you reach down and put both hands on the on the handle, you can feel it kind of twist a little bit uh, in your hands, and you... And it doesn't budge. It feels as though the, the, the weight is tons at this point. But those weakling devils were able to do it. Damn it. Any is the water ideas? completely gone from the room? Uh, it's about two and a half feet still. Okay. Yeah. Well, they they might not want to flood the rest of the area, so it, it might stay locked until the water's gone down mostly. All right. I'll just stand there yeah. resting. Just give it a shot later. Okay. You wait for a couple of minutes, and the water once again has receded. And there's that weird sense as the, the room fills up with air of a pressure change as well, as the air is not only coming into the room, now no longer visible as bubbles, but actually um, because the plants themselves are now above the water, uh, but you can still sort of feel that that uh, air. And the air itself is is not stale, but has a sort of damp plantish quality um, if you've ever been in a forest that's had a recent rainfall and that sense that all of the air has been invaded by small particles of moss or every plant is breathing at you that's kind of what it feels <laughs> like right now cool. and as the the water drops down below about a foot in depth you all hear a, uh, well, in particular, Medric, because you're standing right beside it, you hear a, a shifting sound, like stones moving right by the door. All right, I hear a sound. I, th I think it's time to try again. It should move now. Okay. You ready? Yep. And he... Still at advantage? Yep, yep. I'm hoping. Okay. All right, this time you, you, you wrap your hand around, you brace yourself, you kind of work out that kink in the shoulders that came up from last time you tried this, and the uh, handle moves slightly, uh, almost up a little bit, and you can kind of hear something click underneath the handle, and the door moves up easily. A small amount of water that's on the floor kind of spreads outward in front of you. Ha, lift with your knees, not with your back. Always. <laughs> You move into the hallway? Yep. You I light up the move very slowly. And once again, you kind of see this, this long carved hallway. There's uh, uh, signs that it was carved um, with tools, as you, just, as you kind of discovered before. Uh, it's not fancy. But it does show signs of having been cleared out. So there, there, while there are some, some stones that sort of jut out around you, the weirdest thing is that a lot of it seems to be of solid stone. Whatever this was, it was one solid piece at one point. Silas following along behind. Yep. Uh, the spiritual weapon, the, I think, uh, is... The uh, spiritual weapon is gone now. Gone now, okay. Well, it's yeah, been it's more than... Yep. Hmm? Yeah, it's definitely been more than... Been, uh, like 10 minutes almost. Uh, it cleared out faster than the other room. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why. As you move down the hallway, you end up uh, with a junction of sorts. I'll just move you down there. Um, and then we'll try to remember to move the other map so the people at home can follow along. I have too many versions of maps up. I just lost myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Find yourself at a junction. There are two of these doors now. One that leads to the west and one that leads approximately to the south. They are the same kind of doors you've seen before. Uh, stone with a, a metal handle at the bottom. Metal handles have been rusted a, a little bit, but not as much as you might expect. Damn it. I'll put my ear to one door and then the other door, see what I can hear. Okay. Uh, Medrick walks up and puts his head up against the, uh, let's say, the western door. Make a perception check. Uh, 
It sounds like solid stone. <laughs> I can't fact, hear shit. For the moment, for a moment, there's that sort of, and then you realize that's the sound of the air inside your ear, plucked up against this uh, solid stone. Same thing, it's sort of the same effect of hearing a, a uh, shell. I can hear the ocean. Oh wait, <laughs> it's all around us. Any, can you hear anything? Um, I'll take a, a go at it. Not the perception. I specifically made this character to not be perceptive. <laughs> What's your roll of 20? But I roll a 19. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that is a total 20. Okay. Metric I'm telling seems... you, it's nice in jail. It works. <laughs> Metric <laughs> seems dissatisfied by hearing nothing more than possibly the sound of his own thoughts and maybe what solid stone sounds like to a dwarf. Uh, but uh, you put your, your ear up and then you kind of move off to one side realizing that there are seams here um, where the solid stone goes into the walls. Uh, you get the impression that the door is actually much wider than what you can actually see. Uh, and you hear a couple of different things. Um, one, you hear a very faint voice uh, calling out briefly. Can't make out the, the sound, can't make out the detail, but it was distinctly a voice, and it didn't sound like these other creatures. The other thing you realize is that voice sounded like it was reflecting through open air. It did not sound like it was moving through water. Other than that, the door is too thick, really, you think, to hear much between, and even after that brief sound, there was nothing else. Cool. Was that one door? That was the western door. There's also a okay, southern door. door. Uh, well, this one's going back in jail for rolling a two, so a three. <laughs> Once again, you're looking at it, and this door seems to be even more embedded in the walls. There's less seam, and you can hear nothing beyond. Did I try the uh, southern door already, or, or no. was that roll for both doors? That was for both doors. Okay. Or sorry, that was sorry, that was one door. You didn't try the southern door. Okay, I'll try the southern door now. I think I hear a voice. The voice. I don't know. I, I didn't hear words. I just heard a voice. If that At makes which sense. Which door? Well, the, the, the first one. I would have said that before I checked the other one. Yeah, the western Which door. one were you looking at first, though? Uh, which one was I looking at first? The western that. door. Um, oh, okay. The... Sorry, I'm constantly challenged and ah, I'm being attacked by a cat who wants my pencil. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. She actually scratched me. Hiya, Cammy. <laughs> Packages and she cats. She like, grabbed the... my hand and bit my pencil. <laughs> they are the boon, the bane. Uh, as she's saying this, you're, Medrick, you're finding it impossible to hear anything through the door. You're thinking these are probably walls, but they have handles on them, so technically they're walls and doors. Well, let's go to the western one, then. Maybe that's your voice. Okay. I'll mention that it didn't sound like it was in water. Well, that's good. That means we can probably open the door. So I will grab the handle and... Yank. I'm a crowbar. All right. Wait for Annie to get into position with the crowbar and... Yeah. <laughs> I'll be ready to back. Right, advantage. I forgot about advantage. That's even worse. <laughs> Well, uh, you find your fingers having a hard time gripping onto this. Uh, it feels like there's a lot of rust on the handle. But as you pull up, you find it. the handle moves slightly like the other one did. There is that clattering sound of stone. And you hear the uh, sound of stone grating on stone at the far end of the hallway where you were, where you were and realize that door is closing. But this one opens wide easily. Revealing another hallway. Empty like the other one. Cautiously move forward, holding the light out in front of me, or by me, so my friends can see. Okay. I just realized I don't have everything I wanted on the map, so we will make that part up. Um, I have a, an idea. What? Um, what if I make myself look like one of them? I might be able to walk forward a bit. That would work. Mm -hmm. 
then I, uh, oh, what was his name for it? No, no, that's oh, shoot. Uh, yes, he will use deceptive guys and, uh, the one that was carrying the stone away earlier, okay, mm -hmm. he's gonna look like that one. Okay, had a kind of sandy texture to it, a bit of a, a yellow in the fringe on the back. All right, you now have the appearance of one of them. It's a little unnerving for the other two, uh, just because you know it's Silas. You saw him change, but it's a very convincing illusion. Yep. <laughs> As you move further down that hallway, and the light from Sorry? That's weird. Useful. Illusionist. <laughs> I will follow. All right. Same. All of you step into that hallway, and you can see the hallway ends in another door. Similar to what you've seen before. Doors! Yeah, he's going to move over and try and open the door. Okay. Are you taking the light with you? Because I'll offer it. Uh, no. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he saw Medrick and Annie opening the door, so. Okay, this was Don't a narrower hallway, so it's difficult for Annie to even get in there, but. Um... Oh, yeah, no, he's just doing it by himself. Yep. Uh, you guys should stand back just so they, maybe I can fool them a bit. Yeah. But. Uh... Can I roll the hide check? Like try to make myself as flat on the wall as possible. Yeah, there's a bit, if you go all the way back to the door, there's a bit where the, the bend is enough that you wouldn't be seen from the door. But you can make a, yeah. a hide check from there. Medrick, you're holding on to a light, so it's kind of hard to hide. I'm like, Natural I'm one. I'm my shirt to cover it up a little bit. Natural one. You're, pretty, you're pretty sure you're hidden. <laughs> but you also realize the light from Medrick standing right beside you is completely illuminating the shadows you were intending on standing in. It's all good. I tried. I tried, guys. So I'll, like, dismiss the light. Or I won't. You I'll just like, put your hand my shirt real quick and try to cover it up as much as I can. Okay. You can just put it in your pocket and it should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> you have a glowing pocket now. Cool. Silas, you're going to try to open the door? Yes. Okay, strength check. If the light spell is covered by something opaque, it it covers it. Yeah. Okay. I get an 11. It is tough to move, and you feel kind of where you had been uh, stabbed by that thing before. Mm -hmm. Every time you move, there's a little bit of, 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 of tension, a little bit of, of, of tearing of flesh. But you find that under... Despite the, the heaviness of the door, despite the fact that it is stone, when you lift up on the handle and it does its little clicking thing, you actually feel that the door itself is counterbalanced, and you easily move it up. Standing in front of you, you see another one of those uh, uh, greenish sea devils. Not the same one as you faced before, but um, okay. it seems to be standing there in front of you. You can see beyond them another column that leads into the ceiling. And just beyond them, you can kind of make out what looks like wood, maybe boxes. I will nod slightly at them and attempt to push my way through. Okay, make a deception check. I'll give you advantage because you look like the creature, but... Okay, let's see here. Let's see. It's not great, but it should show up eventually. Oh. Wow. Uh, it, it steps aside and lets you come in. Uh, and then okay. uh, reaches over and grabs the handle of the door and closes it. You both, Medrick and Annie, you hear the uh, door open. You hear a grunt come from Silas. And then the door closes behind him. Uh, Silas, you find yourself here. in that room. You can see now oh, yeah. off to beyond the column, there are piles of what look like wooden crates. And, uh, 
and the creature is is uh, pressing some of the stones just beside the door. You hear a nasty click. We'll never do that. It says to you in a language you do not understand. Medrick, you kind of rush uh, up to the other side of the door. Yeah, I speak back to it uh, in uh, draconic. Okay. Saying, uh, get back. Uh, and I'll change the illusion. I now look like a big dragony hydra thing that barely fits into the height of the room. Well, okay. technically, okay, how big is. Uh, are you using disguise check, uh, self effectively or or illusion? Because no, I'm using. Uh, oh, you had silent your. Image. Oh right, okay, yep, that can be. Uh, the other one I got, like trying to remember how big that one can be. Uh, almost silent image. Fifteen foot cube. Oh yeah, I can easily mm -hmm. fill that so space. I make it look like I've suddenly expanded into some sort of. Uh, Terrifying underwatery uh, demon thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, you, your your body form kind of explodes from what it recognized as familiar to something that it seems clearly uh, terrified by. Uh, make a performance check. Uh, or intimidation. You can use either one. Uh, I'm going for performance because I don't have intimidation. Okay, you will have advantage because of the illusion. Cool. God. Twenty. All right. Well, it will try a, st a perception check. Nah. Uh, as it staggers backward against the wall, uh, hissing and calling out to you, Medric, you stand before the door. It is closed once more. I will give him the crowbar if he wants. Okay. I and, can't. Help, I, I can't personally help him, but at least. All right. Annie if hands you the crowbar. I will. Do I hear anything on the other side of the door? Unfortunately, these doors are really. Boomy. They're really Boys. thick doors, so unless you actually put your ear to the door, you wouldn't necessarily hear much. Um, well, I'm kind of terrified for Silas in a room by himself, where I can't see if there's any monsters in there, so. <laughs> I'll try to open the door. Okay, you put your hand on the on the door. You will get the strength check with advantage. One Ooh. thing you notice right away is the handle does not move. That would be athletics. Uh, if you have athletics. Yeah. Because I think he does. Oh yeah, that's a plus five. With it, with advantage. Yes, because of the crowbar. Oof! Oh, hand slipped. Let's try again. That's better. <laughs> first one was a practice heave. A practice heave. Well, the first thing you notice is when you put your hand on this handle, unlike the one, the other ones which have moved easily, this one does not move at all. It doesn't click or anything in place. And in that instance, you kind of realize that the, the difference kind of is locked or unlocked, whereas before it was using natural stone somewhere, maybe a counterbalance, you're not sure exactly how the mechanism works, to balance off the heavy weight of the door. This time you find you have to take the weight of the door entirely on your own shoulders. You plant your feet, you put the war hammer off to one side, and you grip. Uh, now using the, the crowbar and kind of, uh, how would that look? I guess you're kind of leveraging the crowbar uh, underneath, around the edge of the door. You jam it inward and you start to heave upward, but the, the weight of this door is such that with it locked like this, uh, you manage to get it about a foot and a half off the ground, and you're barely holding it from there. On the inside of the room, you hear, and all of you actually hear, the, the grating sound of the stone being pushed uh, inside and around the door. Uh, it seems to be uh, fighting against some sort of heavy weight. Uh, the sea devil that you are facing off looks nervously towards the door. From behind you, Silas, uh, you hear the sound of another door opening, mm -hmm. something set, st stepping through, but behind that, 
you hear the sound of voices. Uh, someone, uh, a, a male voice, uh, normally deep but straining a little bit, weaker. Uh, thank you very much for reminding me to move the map. Uh, the, uh, the, um, where was I? Uh, yelling out, uh, hey, hey out there, can you help us? Help us. Uh, and another uh, weaker voice, uh, a feminine voice, uh, saying, please help. And how will we roll initiative? Do we recognize that the female voice? It does not sound familiar. Cool. Twelve. Am I still holding onto the door? or is... You are still holding onto the door. Yeah, twelve. Does that mean I roll initiative or just... You'll still roll initiative, but you can choose, choose what to do on your on your turn. Okay. Uh, just one second as I reset this. Okay. Uh, let's go for that. 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 And that. Um, Annie, you rolled a what? Twelve. This guy rolls that, and this guy, wait, this guy, <sighs> all right, everything's running so slowly right now. I now have three dice in jail, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to put roll 20 in jail if it keeps going slow like this. Oh, come on. It's, it's That's why I can't the same use way. anything in it. I can use the chat. I can point things. But the moment I move a token or use my, my sheet while I'm, like, even just in voice chat, it just completely freezes. Okay. Uh, there. I finally think I've got all the initiatives in there. Uh, Medric? Yep. I got a 11. It's, it should be on the thing. Oh, mm -hmm. there it is. Yep. Wow. Mine would be 12.16. There's, And what would your... What's your dexterity score, um, Medric? Oh. Zero. Zero, okay. Because we're... Everybody rolled <laughs> almost exactly the same initiative. <laughs> it's just, just ridiculous. It'd be 11.10 or 11.11, .11, then probably 11.10. Yours is 11 point... You're kidding me. You rolled 11 no, as well? his would be 11.10. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Mine is 3.12, but I'm not on there yet. Um, did you Sorry, Did you roll it three. with the... I have a hard out at 3 o'clock anymore. Okay, well, I, I still have a, a energy out kind of at... Uh, <laughs> at uh, I rolled mine back when we were all originally on there. So oh, okay. 3.12. Okay. Well, there's nobody... There's nobody opposing you, so I don't need the point one two. Uh, let's see. This is the closest initiative I've ever seen, though. Honestly. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is ridiculous. <laughs> that is totally ridiculous. Okay. Uh, Annie, you're up. You can hear someone calling from within. You also notice the door closed behind Silas as he went in, which is probably not good. Medric is yeah. struggling to to hold the door open, even only a foot and a half, and just can barely I holding it. Can I under the door? You certainly can. I will do that. So um, I will say it's it's a difficult terrain to move under the door because it's not open very much. Cool. So. Also, it's currently full of uh, massive Hydra snake beasts. Well, it, as soon as you roll into the other side, you find yourself standing between one of those familiar, familiar looking uh, sea devils and a monster on the other side that stands nearly, well, fills the room, which is about an eight and a half foot ceiling uh, with and multiple. That... Sorry. Oh, oh, it's Silas doing that. Okay, cool. You have no Bring... idea what's doing it, but it's got multiple heads. It looks like a snake's body with multiple snake heads. Uh, flying overhead, and it seems to be cowering the sea devil. This may Some have been the head. creature which was actually inhibiting, the, inhabiting this whole area. You don't know. Yup. I but, don't know what well, 
that, but I do know that the sea devils have been hurting us this entire time. She'd probably get an int uh, save or... If you take an action to inspect, you can look through the illusion potentially. Yeah, well, because... Like, I'm taking up a 15-foot cube. Like, I'm actually taking up the spot she's in. So she's standing in the middle of me. Well, I suppose, yeah. So you're kind of moving through the... At that point, it's apparent to you. However, the sea devil will get a check. Uh, which I think they call it investigation, but it just basically means straight up roll. Well, I think if they... Yeah. But well, I think if they take an action, it's investigation... It's still uh, completely fixated on the fact wow. that this monster has created, has appeared in front of it. Uh, so no, it Andy, has an adventurer inside it. Have... Maybe it ate the adventurer and it's going to eat me next, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm um, kind of accidentally now, interacting with it. Silas is beside him, you know, like the, the big monster is beside him, would that give me any sneak attack? No. No. Because you're not, no. it's not actually engaged with it. It's just an illusion. Okay. He's still actually five feet away from it, so he can't poke at it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I will check it. That is a six to eleven. Unfortunately, it is it backed itself way up against the wall and kind of swats at anything coming near it. it it may have thought it was a tentacle or a head that was flying towards it, but it happened to be your dagger, and it kind of knocks it out of the out of the way. Okay, I will move over to here. Uh, okay. And I will use my bonus action to give advantage to hit the sea devil. To whom? I. Uh, so the, the, the thing is, you give advantage to hit the monster specifically. It depends on the distance from the, of the monster. Oh, okay. Because before you yeah. were giving it to specific people. I, I know, I was doing it wrong and then I corrected myself. Oh, okay. okay. So what do, you, what do you say or do to do that? It's in a corner, get it. <laughs> okay. <That's what>? It's, <laughs> it's in, in a, a corner, corner. <laughs> get it. Get him, Ray. Hey, uh, 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 get this... The sea devil. I don't know what what the other thing is. Yeah. Okay. More direct. Sure. Of like this doesn't seem to be a problem. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, I... One thing is weird. One thing is scary. Sure, that's <laughs> it's definitely way, true. Way she thinks. It's definitely true. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, you kind of roll out of the way. Uh, from behind you, Silas, you can hear another creature uh, who's uh, stepped through another door which is opened. It still seems to be open for the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, the... Hmm, let's see, what it, it's going to take a moment to try to figure out what the hell's going on. So does Silas get, still look like a sea devil? He certainly does. And it's not moving any closer no, if it can figure it out. I look, uh, well, yeah. Well, or, sorry, it doesn't look like a sea devil. Looks like a but large, multi headed monster. Uh, it seems to. Uh, it kind of waves its, its, its trident and it kind of passes right through the, the, the closest edge of your long, uh, snake like body. It calls out something to the other one. <laughs> which you're not sure what that means, but it probably isn't good. Nope. That's its turn. The other one. Uh, let's see. Hmm. The other one kind of reaches out a little bit as if to, to strike at it, but kind of noticing uh, uh, Annie there turns and... Uh, kind of bares its teeth and growl, growls at you, this strange warbling growl. Uh, let's see. That's unsettling. It kind of is. You get, you get the feeling that it's kind. Of, if, if it could flush its cheeks red, it probably would. It'd be like, I was fooled by this thing, and there's another <laughs> thing, and I didn't even realize it. Ah, and it snaps its teeth out at you, lunges forward, and tries to bite. 
12. I don't think that no. hits. Uh, you kind of step back quickly, and at that point, kind of lunges forward with both hands, tries to claw at you. No. But unfortunately, it's still, although it kind of, you feel like it's realized this is an illusion in front of it, it's still shying away from it. It's still moving around it as if, you know, it's an, it may be an illusion, but it might still be solid, so I'm going to be careful. Uh, and it uh, it swings right by you. It's going to stay where it's at, though. Uh, Medric, this is getting really heavy. You feel as if the weight of a mountain is holding on this door. Your back is starting to get a little sore. And it's still not that... And if I let it go, is it going to fall down immediately? You feel like it's pressing down on you still. All right, well, I will try to get inside... Uh, with a monumental burst of effort. So imagine, like, instead of a barbell, I'm going to be doing this with a door. So it's pretty much going to look like a, I'm going to try to do, like, a power snatch with the door. Like, okay, lift so... it up just enough to get under it, and then press it up, and then just go inside. Okay, it's still only a foot and a half off the ground. So it's going to have to be one hell of a power yeah, snatch. Yeah, that's exactly where, like, the bar is usually for deadlifts. All right, all right. <laughs> all right, getting ready for this. <sighs> Oh, Whoa, gosh. natural 20. Nicely done. You still have advantage, but it doesn't matter. For y'all. That is that is kind of amazing. Uh, the goal of D&D. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, you, you lean into it. It's like a door, and it's like, lift. Go underneath and catch it and push it up. Step under and, like, quickly make my way into the room. Okay. Okay. That exactly. Uh, you you kind of plant your feet. So you stir up a little bit of, of uh, sand and dirt around your, around the space that you're at. Uh, with a bit of a cry, you heave this door open, much to the shock and surprise of the creature that's standing right by the door. Uh, and yeah, you heave it up. You step inward, step forward, and you hear it come behind you. There is a lot of echo. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, it's sorry. Like into room echo, I think, unfortunately. Um, also, I got kind of energetic. I was excited. That was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was excited when Dice finally, like, cooperated. <laughs> there you go. We just made D&D. Oh, yeah. And you step into the room and immediately discover you're standing halfway through this strange multi-headed hydra. Essentially, that's what it is. Uh, if you know the image, that's what the image is going for. Um, which is... Disconcerting as you see these heads kind of dart in and out of your body. Uh, there's also the creature standing right beside you as well. Do I still have an attack? Or? Uh, that was your action, but you still have some movement left. And a bonus. And bonus, yeah. I don't really have a bonus unless it's spiritual. I don't, I don't want to use up my last slot yet. <laughs> Fair enough. Then, yeah, I'll just bring the light back out as a bonus action then. Okay, you reach in your pocket, pull out this glowing light, looking every bit the glowing, glowing hero of Ignis, kind of wrenches open the door, throws in a, a light that lands on the on the ground. Needless to say, you think this uh, sea devil is impressed. All right. And I will stand defensively. All right, Silas. Um. Well. Uh, I'm gonna stop concentrating on the uh, the big hydra illusion, uh, and I'm going to uh, spit poison at the sea devil below me. The one okay to the south of you. Yep, the venomous burst. It has to make a thirteen uh, con save or take. Very little damage. Okay. <laughs> There's a cattail. <laughs> you should jump behind my computer. <laughs> okay. She's being a butt. <laughs> uh, let's see. How do I do a save? Huh, that's weird. May just be a stat roll. That is not enough. Hey, good. It takes four poison damage. All right. As you all watch as the illusion of this multi-headed snake-like being vanishes, revealing uh, 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 a 
normal sized <laughs> Silas Marsh, um, who then immediately spins around and it might be a vestige of the illusion, but seems to hawk a loogie <laughs> straight at the creature, uh, which sort of hits it uh, uh, on the on the snout. And you can see it kind of like <laughs> waving it off of its, uh, its uh, a stream face. Stream of greenish poison. Stream of... It's kind Which of like... mostly misses, sadly. Well, yeah. Enough of it hit that it was annoyed, that's for sure. Mm. All right. Uh, and then bonus action to charge up the staff. Okay. Once again, the green glow forms around the staff. Describe your staff again. Uh, is it just a, a normal piece of wood? The way it was drawn, there's kind of a, a uh, almost like a snake uh, twisted around the uh, the wood of the staff, and then it's got uh, his um, his crystal focus at the top, which is like a disc with like undulating waves or shapes on it. Cool. Okay. Um. At this point, uh, just kind of mirroring your own action, Gideon pops out of your pocket and hisses at the th at the creature. No, Gideon is back at the lighthouse. Oh, right, right. You did leave him right, behind. Right. Yep, I'm not dragging him underwater where he can't breathe. Mm. Okay, makes sense. Uh, well, he would have if he was here. You feel that spiritual successor. Uh, Annie. Hello. Um, I will take another swing at this thing. Okay. It prefers not to I be swung at. Uh, oh, that's a natural 17. So Ooh. 22. That's definitely hit. Perfect. And people are within range of him. Absolutely. So. Medic's yep. right there. Uh, that is, oof. Uh, six, eight, plus eight. So 16 plus three. So 19 damage. Holy crap. <laughs> Uh, as it uh, is cowering I'm up against... Keep rolling pictures and I, I'm going to keep rolling it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least some dice don't deserve to be in the jail. Uh, as uh, as it retreats from crying, trying to, to bite at you, you find that opportunity as it kind of looks over, still half in retreat, seeing Medra come in, throwing down this, this globe of light, which it might have heard about. You don't really know. Uh, you catch it underneath the chin with your, your rapier and kind of scrape it all the way back as it kind of helps you leaning backward and you scrape into its chin. It howls in frustration and anger. Uh, let's see. That's your action. You have a bonus and a move. Um, I will give advantage to hit it with my bonus and I will stay where I am. Okay. Maybe pointing out that it's got a weak chin now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of leaving my rapier there until someone else tries to attack. Okay, just throw it at my rapier. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> just, just right there. <laughs> okay. Uh, this one takes one step backward. And you see the door crush, uh, crash down and closed. Uh, let's see. The other one. Hmm. The other one slips up to the door right beside you, Medric, which means Annie is mm -hmm. leaving your space. You can make an uh, opportunity attack. I will. Ooh. Not, not Medric, Annie. Okay. That is a four on the dice, so no. Oh. Um, Medric, you see it uh, reach over to the side wall of what look like a couple of stones, uh, but it presses the stones. There's like a cluster of four stones. It presses on the stones, and you hear a kathunk from uh, in the wall somewhere, then reaches down, grabs onto the handle, and easily opens the door. Bastard. The door stays open while it steps through, but that is leaving your space. Hit it. Two-handed. Uh, that is a hit. 
as you kind of catch it with the edge of the Warhammer right across the shoulder. So strength bonus plus proficiency when I hit? I forget. Not, not proficiency strength. for the damage. Okay. Damn. Oh, Jesus. Uh, as the uh, Warhammer crashes down on its shoulder, it stumbles forward and is no more. Can we say the door like falls down and crushes him even more, uh, just for good measure? Unfortunately, the door <laughs> itself is is uh, is staying open. Okay. But he has oh, so that's the doors work. He has fallen through the doorway though, uh, and uh, kind of gurgles and falls to the ground. Being this close to them this time with the full light, both of you notice as a little bit of that. Uh, darkness that that sheen that was across them kind of flows downward onto the ground itself separately all right that is that was <laughs> note to Where did self the other guy go? he went through the door and silas will point at it there's people on the other side with the light here too, Annie, you can easily make out that there are crates and barrels and boxes piled up in this room. Yeah, we can check those in a minute. I think we should follow the other guy. I'll look for... Um, actually, no, I'll tell Annie that there's like some kind of buttons by the door. I see. Because Annie is better at finding things than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you see any like by the south door? I'm really not. I just rolled really good that one time. Okay. <laughs> not supposed to admit uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's a, a, a innate to try to find them. Um, I've, not, I've not seen them touch a button much or paid attention to them touching a button. I don't know what you're talking about. Look over here. I saw which ones. Uh... Well, the sorts of ones you had touched. Can I make an investigation? Yeah, I'll make it. I'll check too for more buttons. I'll find. I'll say with the the group of you looking and and Medrick kind of knowing what he's looking for. He just doesn't know what he's looking for. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I just have to find a couple of things, and this is going super slow all of a sudden. Um, you can easily find those those uh, those stones in a similar configuration. Uh, you get the impression that they are they are meant to be somewhat hidden, so they aren't regular. They aren't really shaped in the same way, other than being four small stones. And after a couple of moments of experimentation, you hear with a satisfaction uh, some uh, uh, clicking sounds. Essentially, it doesn't seem to be as heavy as before. Uh, almost as though this door wasn't in the same way closed or, or barred. Oh, we just locked it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody going to open the door? Yep. Okay. And your illusion is now gone, right, Silas? Yep. Let's get rid of that. Is it still an athletics check to open the door, even though we've pressed the buttons? Uh, it is. It's still a heavy door. Okay. Oop. Yeah. Not a problem. Uh, as before, the handle moves slightly, and it's almost as though the door op opens itself, even though it does need a pretty heavy, uh, hefty uh, move in the end. The door opens, and Medrick, you can see Silas is, is kind of on the edge there. Uh, Annie, the light's over by you, so you can't really see into the room. Uh, but you notice the the uh, the uh, uh, one with the trident that you'd seen here standing towards the back of the room. It is a, a smallish cave. Um, there is a uh, uh, two cages in here. Um, they look like they're they're um, of old manufacture, but they're metal cages. In one, you can see uh, uh, what looks like an older man off to the left-hand side. I'm reusing some images here, so don't take them as the pictures they represented before. You've seen these characters in different circumstances, or these these images in different circumstances. I just used a couple of ones that I happen to have on hand. My memory is bad, so I don't remember those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't remember them at all. Yeah. Um, 
just in case I, I did throw that caveat out there. And they're also not exact matches because I realized I forgot to get images for the characters that I was going to put here. Uh, but the one on the left is a man. Looks like he's uh, sitting in this cage. The cage is, is uh, about uh, seven feet tall, so it almost reaches right to the ceiling. Uh, and you can see uh, a bedraggled-looking man inside, a semi-balding head, uh, graying hair, a uh, stubble of a beard that's growing on as well, uh, dressed in fairly plain clothes uh, that look like they are um, soaking wet. In the other cage, or actually what was in the other cage, uh, is a woman uh, who looks like she's wearing a, a fairly well-made dress, but it looks like it's been soaked repeatedly. It hangs pretty heavily across her. Her hair is, is wet, uh, long brown hair that is tied up, but, um, but weakly so. Standing behind her is the trident-carrying sea devil, who seems to grab, have a hold of the back of her clothing and the trident pressed into her back. And sort of yells out towards you in this incomprehensible language. I think he means to do harm to her, says the guy from the other cage. Be careful. Well, it's going to have some harm done to it. And we'll just kind of skip forward to, uh, we just had Medric's turn, just to keep that simple. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Silas. Hmm. Hmm. I am going to, uh, well, if Medric's staying there, I'm going to move into the room. Okay, stepping around him? Yeah. Uh, and say into its mind, let her go and we won't kill you. Okay. Um... And I'm doing my best to be intimidating. Because I don't actually intend to kill it either way. <laughs> I do. But I would like to, because uh, I'm not a killer. Uh, I just wanted to let her go. Okay. Intimidation roll then. Mm, not bad. And did we did we establish that it could speak back? Yeah. Okay. Now, it says that it can understand. Uh, well, it says we don't have to share a language. Uh, don't need to share a language with it for the cre with the creature for it to understand your telepathic utterances. But it must be able to understand at least one language. So it's possible I won't necessarily understand it, but it will understand me. I think that that's up to you. The, the neat thing about telepathy is it kind of moves beyond language. Uh, and as long as you understand languages of some kind, you can kind of understand it. The grammar will probably be off and it will be confused. But in this case, um, uh, there is a response, essentially, back kind of uh, slow, but um, more cautious, you think, than, than, uh, than, than non-intelligent. Um, I serve the brood. I will die if I do not defend myself. Leave this place and you may live. Mm. You get the impression that it, it is frightened of what you said, but it also feels like it has no choice. Uh, Annie. Yeah. Um... I I don't know what I want to do. Why is this so wide? Okay, cool. My entire page like zoomed in. Um so from where I am, can I see the sea devil? Um it's very dim in there, but you can just sort of make it out briefly around Medric. Okay, and do I do I see that he's holding? I I heard the dude saying something about him wanting to hurt her. Okay, cat, calm down. 
Um, so I don't want to be the reason she gets hurt, but I am going to move to the door. Um, and then you can clearly see that that she's kind of being held at a weird angle in front of, um, in front of uh, it. And uh, yeah. the angle of the way its its shoulder is, you can clearly see that it's um, uh, kind of keeping her at bay. Okay. Um, I will move here. And then I want to read its expression. Like, if I if I go to move forward, does is, is it reacting? Uh, you see her wince as probably the trident was pressed into her back. Okay. Uh, I don't want to move any further then. Um, but if it comes near me, I will hold an attack. Okay. Uh, let's see. It turns with her in front of it and moves towards the door as if to press through. So it's using it as a, uh, or it's using her as a as a shield at the moment. So it's kind of holding at that moment. But I it, mean, I'm not going to let it get sorry. through the door. You're, you're staying put as well. Yep. Medric. All right, let's see. Well, my DCs aren't very good, so I don't know if I want to try this. Yeah. Okay, what are you let's trying hope to, this works. What are you trying to do? I'll cast Hold Person on the Sea Devil. Okay, cool. All right. Nice. It's only a DC of 12, though. All right. What's, so hopefully it rolls really low. What's the save? Uh, I believe it's... Check. I checked earlier and forgot already. <laughs> That's where right. when you're, like, choosing what spell you're going to use, and you know what it does, and then you put it down, and then you're just like... <laughs> Wisdom save. And just, just imagine what it's like when you have dozens of characters you have to be responsible yeah. for. It's again. why I don't DM. Like I very <laughs> much appreciate it. All right, so, so wisdom save. save. Yeah. Wisdom save it on was. the way. <laughs> oh. As you it see, its helped. limbs stiffen. It still has right. a grip on her, and it's still kind of got the trident pressed up against her back, but it doesn't seem to be making any forward motion. Kill him. Uh, I am going to try to yank her away from it. Okay, so you're you're not doing. You're not going to talk to it again. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm gonna yeah keep talking at it, but. Uh, okay. My action is I'm gonna try and yank her out of its grasp. Roll an intimidation roll for me as well with advantage, and then make a. Um, make an athletics roll to pull her away. Hey, the intimidated jerk. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's kind of got a, it feels like a, a death grip on her uh, her clothing and kind of pinned up against the the uh, the uh, uh, trident. And you feel her kind of uh, cry out in pain as you probably are moving her a little bit further into the trident at the moment. My buffness, where has it gone? <laughs> Uh, make an insight there, check, Silas, however. So who makes a what check? Silas makes an insight check. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, not so good. She's upset. Um, Annie. Uh, I would like to try to do the same thing to, to pull her. Okay. Oh, I... Um... That is a twelve on the dice. Uh, like... Actually, uh, what was its opposing role though? Because it's 
parallelized. It's it's yeah. basically against a static object rather than it trying to actively oppose. So there was just a target number in place. You just happen to roll incredibly low. Yeah, well, because I think it automatically fails. It, it it can't move its limbs, and its hands were tightly gripped on its clothing, and and they tried and pressed, so it mm. literally can't move out of the way to be released. Um, you're sure. kind of having to fight the 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 heldness of the person, if you will. Um, uh, uh, just, what stat is it that I'm using? It's an athletics roll if you have it, or strength if you don't. Uh, so uh, that is eleven, twelve. Yeah, no problem. You're not sure why Silas was having such a big issue, but you also get this <laughs> weird impression that Silas was thinking about something really deeply while he was doing that and not really paying attention. Uh, but you easily managed to kind of pull her uh, her clothing and let it slip. Maybe it's also something about knowing how clothing moves, that the cloth can easily be moved out of a hand that's holding it tightly. Uh, but you manage to kind of pull her out, and she kind of leans forward and grasps onto you like a, a person who's been drowning. Uh, and her uh, clothing uh, is soaking wet. And I would like to try to drag her into to this room as far as I can. Okay, unless Medric is opposing it, I don't think there's a problem nope. uh, <laughs> trying to pull her back into the other room. But and it's... I ask her her name. Okay. Oh, that I have somewhere. Um... Let's see. Da -da -da. If I can scroll fast enough. Oh, too fast. Uh, she's kind of sobbing into your shoulder. My, na my name is Joan. Joan. Uh, well, we've, got, we've got you, Joan. And she kind of just starts sobbing into your shoulder, which is adding more water onto the already soakedness of her. Um, and there's a bit of a musty smell, actually, around her as well. Uh, is, uh, even, I mean, you're already kind of soaking wet. You've just dried out a little bit a little recently. Uh, but she seems like she's been repeatedly soaked. And all of the, her skin is very uh, um, uh, drawn and tight. Uh, or, sorry, not drawn tight. Loose. Uh, kind of like uh, you've been in a bathtub for too long. You know, the kind of feeling where all the oils start getting Pruny. sucked out. Pruny. That's it. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh, it gets a save at the end of its turn for whole person, or does it get a save at all? I keep forgetting. End of each turn. End of each turn, yep. Okay. Uh, wisdom save. Right. Did it fire? It may have fired. Fired. 14, what's the save? Damn it, 12. 12? Okay. You kind of see it shake its its uh, uh, itself to kind of get out of that stiffness. The hand kind of was out, and now it's retracting the hand. Um but it backs into the corner over here, dropping its trident, looking at Silas with an absolute fear, and bowing down its head in supplication. Medric, what do you do? I'm popular. You're not sure exactly I'll what just happened it. there. And I see that it's being non-threatening now. So. Absolutely. I'll just move closer to it and stand like intimidating, I guess. Like, I mean, if he's not going to attack me. Although I will hold an action to like take a swing at him if he does attack me. Okay. Um, as you look, as you stand closer to him, it's a little disconcerting because it doesn't even look at you uh, more than a glance. Its eyes seem to be fixated when it does look up at Silas. The fellow from the cage uh, calls out, "Well, I, I've never seen that before." I'll go let him out, actually. Okay. Um, as you look at the cage, you notice that it is a metal cage. It is a bit rusty. But the rust only goes to about a foot from the top. And then stops. There is a, uh, a heavy lock on it. It is rusted. It is sealed, however. Are you going to try is to it... open it now, or are you going to try to... Well, if the, if the sea devil has the key, I'm probably going to wait and find out. Because he did open the other cage. Seems like he did. Yeah, if you still got the crowbar, you could probably just smash it off. Yeah, you would have the, the, the crowbar because you Actually, were using he, it to open the door. He right. kind of left I it will... behind when he opened the door. Uh, and, and you what? see it there sitting beside you, uh, Annie. Fair enough. 
But you can probably smash at the lock if you want. Yep, yeah, I'll smash it then. Is it yeah, a warhammer? Even better for that. <laughs> or you know, lock picks. <laughs> but it would be more intimidating if I smashed it. It's probably true. Is it an, an attack roll or like a strength roll or athletics? Uh, it's an attack roll because you're kind of you're doing a swing and attack, and if you miss, then it looks less intimidating. Well, <laughs> oh, I smash a rock on the ground. Then. <laughs> uh, okay, so you you kind of go and you're trying to intimidate this creature and get a little maybe a little annoyed that it's not really paying much attention to you. So you swing heavily down with the the uh, the warhammer, catching the warhammer on the upper part of the cage, and kind of sending it back and hitting yourself in the head with it. Oops. Uh, aim a little lower, kid. Because the guy from inside the cage. Yeah, yeah. And I'll wind up for another swing. <laughs> right. We're not really worrying about initiative at this particular point. It seems like it's utterly cowed. Although, actually, hmm. <laughs> I think um, it's going gonna, to try what? to make a run for it. So, as it sings, sees Medric swing for the second time thinking that he's engaged, it's going to make a run. I'm not going to attack it. I'm going to attack it. <laughs> I'm looking around the room. Are you going to attack it, uh, Medric? Because you are swinging oh, at yeah. the, the hammer, or at the, the, the cage. It timed it so that you would it would be uh, a difficult, so I'll say a disadvantage to hit it if you want to, but you can still make an attack of opportunity. Oh, yeah. That hits. Well, how many more times are you rolling here? <laughs> what? I thought you said I was at disadvantage. Oh, okay. It looked like it was rolling three times there. Okay. No, the first one. Uh, what the hell? I think it did roll three times, so it would be the first two rolls for advantage. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's... The 17 hits. Okay. As you kind of are swinging towards the the, uh, the cage, catch it out of the corner of your eye and swing backward, catching it. Oof. Pretty nasty hit, causing it to uh, stumble a little bit. Silas, hit it. Silas does not. God damn it. Uh, it runs out. It's trying to get around you, Annie. Are you trying to block it from leaving? I will block it from leaving because... Okay. I've been taught tactics, and uh, letting people go get help is not good tactics. No. Okay. Annie, kill it! <laughs> I scream down the hall. Uh, make a... Um... Acrobatics or athletics versus what it's trying to do to bowl through you? Uh, acrobatics, please. Okay, it's going to try to just use brute strength. I'm sorry to say that's a nat one. Oh, no. no. You kind of that dodge. I'm the first guy in jail. I'm <laughs> down to two D20s where I have to go get more. You kind of dodge left and you dodge right and then it just sort of rolls right through you, pushing by you uh, at the door. But it still has to like press the buttons, right? Well, it's it's going to try to open the door, uh, and that's basically where it ends up stopping, as it kind of grips onto the bottom, and you can see it sort of gri gripping randomly at the at the bottom, trying to, um, trying to move it. Let's see if it can do it here. That's another athletics roll. Oh, actually. It manages to move it about a foot, but you can hear that grating sound now. Uh, and you can see it's kind of desperation to try to get away. Yup. Meanwhile, uh, what are Medric and Silas doing about this creature? Following it? Whose turn is it? Uh, we still got to let the guy out, don't we? We can let and him out. Thanks, Dad. Silas is checking the room because. It looks like there's a small chest and coins at the bottom. Okay. So, let me just go uh, scroll. He's, through. Che he's checking the room for anything or anyone else. Okay. Medric, are you going after him? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's if Medric there. leaves, I will go start beating on the... Uh, on the lock? On the lock with my enchanted staff. Okay. So, from... Like I said, I have lock picks. That's it. Uh, 
It's like everybody. Yeah, but you guys are all trying to kill that uh, sea devil. Out everybody there. suddenly feels like barbarians, to Annie. he's like, "But I, I can open it with style and grace." And bang, ba bang, ba bang. Oh, that's, that damage. that's how she. That's how she She's feels in the other room. Uh, it's utterly in, uh, entangled with the door. Uh, trying to open it up and it looks over its shoulder just in time for the hammer to come smashing down on its skull and it crushes into the ground. The door slams uh, uh, beneath it. Um, and uh, or crushed by door. Kind of, yeah. This time it actually it catches its foot on the door. It howls and then uh, it is it is no more. Kind of Finish falls him. over. Oh, I finished him. Okay. Oh yeah, he's he's well dead. He died with basically the other one died too. So, cool. terrible spot for these guys. We got a pile going on there. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. All right, um, Silas, you're you're taking a look at the at the uh, the lock and trying to just batter it off. Um, uh, yeah, he's trying to wedge his uh, staff in some way that he can try and pry it loose. Okay. The staff does give it a bonus to attack, so we'll use that bonus as well here. Uh, Annie, you hear that they've kind of wandered back into the other room. The the hey. the girl seems calmer for the moment, but also still still somewhat high strung. Um. Yeah, and w you hear this this creaking snap as uh, Silas manages to lever open the doorway. Uh, and the the lock kind of falls apart, uh, and the the cage opens. Thank you, lad. Let's get you out of here. Uh, and the, the guy stands, steps up, kind of straightens himself up, brushes himself off a little bit. Uh, it's good to be out of there. These guys have no sense of well anything. How did you get down here? Why well, the usual way. I was nearly drowning. Name's Gaetano, by the way. And he extends his hand. G-A-E-T-A-N-O uh, G -A -E -T -A -N -O is the way you would hear it. Yeah. Extends his hand. You can see that he's got very thinning uh, gray hair now. Uh, great big me uh, meaty fists. Very thick forearms. A lot of, lot of hair on the forearms also has that similar gray. Uh, dressed pretty simply in a... In a uh, uh, what was probably a white tunic or a tan tunic or an off-white tunic at one point. Now you can see it's been it's been uh, salt logged and uh, waterlogged a number of times, uh, wearing uh, uh, cut off uh, sort of three-quarter leg uh, pants, uh, a pair of, of boots that look like they've been seen better days. Um, uh, <sighs> thanks for getting me out of this jam, kids. But uh, you weren't trying to ship with the uh, I described the flag with the woman pointing out to sea well I was yeah it was a nasty swell that came up and I fell myself overboard thought that was bad enough until I started being pulled down nasty buggers got their got their hands on me before I had a chance Silas looks relieved oh I was wondering uh, we we were on the lighthouse when that happened I thought I'd seen someone fall overboard yeah what happened with the light going out I'm assuming that's something they did, too. Yeah. Uh, yes, actually. There was a bright rock that was being used as the light source, and they made off with it. We suspect it might be around here, in these caves. Have you seen it? They also have a young elven woman. Well, when I came in here, I was barely breathing. And they'd done something yeah. to keep me alive, I guess. But didn't really ask any, any questions. Uh, there's a... There's a leader down here. I'm not sure exactly what she's up to. Where's um, Annie, by the way? Uh, I'm staying with, with Joan. Okay. Um, I, I'm slightly insulted that they broke the lock because poor lock. <laughs> hey, if you'd been here... <laughs> it was already rusted all the hell anyway. <laughs> we can fix that. <laughs> Um, he walks over to the crate. That looks familiar. Walks over to the, the chest that's there. It's a small chest, uh, about uh, two and a half feet wide uh, by about a foot deep. Uh, he throws back the top of it. You can see it's it's been waterlogged, and the, the wood itself is starting to, to go. You can see there's there's some gold coins inside, some cups, 
It looks like a hodgepodge of things that have been taken. Kind of digs through it. Ah, there we are. And he pulls out a cutlass. And he uh, actually oh. gives the cutlass a kiss. Ah, darling, it feels so good to have you back again. And he kind of gives it a couple of tentative swings. Ah. Does this cutlass have a name? <laughs> Are you going to find out? You're kind of in the other room. You can hear the uh, voice. The other room with, with Joan. Uh, she'd be asking if she was also part of the uh, of the ship. You can see she. there may be shock or something that settled in. She's starting to shake a little bit. It seems a little kind of chilled. Uh, her her chin is kind of shaking a little bit. Y yes, I, I was, I was going to 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 ask us to see my husband. He's been away for a long time, and uh, going to Pitajun. He'd moved there a while ago. He sent word for me to come, and and I had, and I was supposed to. Oh, I hope everything is okay. I just want to go. Uh, make an insight check, Annie. Definitely. Insight, uh, is one, so that is 13. 13? Um, she is definitely going into shock a little bit. She's not lying at all. She, did you get the impression that she couldn't tell anything but the truth at this particular moment? And there's a little bit of, of blood on her back where the trident did actually pierce uh, her skin. Um, But the other thing that strikes you is the the voice coming from the person they released in the other room sounds vaguely familiar. You can't oh no. quite place exactly where it's from. It does sound vaguely familiar. Uh, the uh, the gentleman Gitano um, kind of says, "I'm sure there's a belt around here somewhere to hold this damn thing, but it's probably gotten all soaked up." They there were in the other room. Ah, good. They uh, kept asking a lot of questions. Uh, well, one of them did. There was a, uh, I guess it was a woman, their leader, I think. She kept asking me all these sorts of questions about, well, what I'd seen on the sea. It's funny, too, because that's kind of what I was looking for myself. But they had a nasty habit of filling the room up with water, just up to about the top of the cage couldn't do anything but kind of swim upward uh is uh, joan okay she seemed to fare the worst of it i'm i'm used to being in the water uh she's with annie i guess right before we before i make my way back to the other room like i'll look in the chest what else is there aside from coin which i'm assuming uh, uh hey, so we're all taking these coins right um Silas is conflicted because th I mean that's theft. It's not actually our stuff. But I mean, we weren't going to leave it to the sea devils. They have been stealing people and eating them, so yeah, I think we can take their stuff. Confiscate or steal with an int of like minus one. Would I know what confiscate means? <laughs> <laughs> uh, to take what's not yours, confiscate. but but say that you're part of the law. It's probably what confiscate means. Um, yeah. <laughs> Gaetano gestures at the box. I think that was the uh, tax pay going traveling from one place to another. You don't normally see that much coin in one place. But they threw in whatever else they could find that was shiny down here. These bastards just like shiny things, I think. Except that other one. She wanted something more. Still not really sure about that. Does she have a name that you heard? Uh, I didn't hear it. I can't understand what they're saying to themselves, to each other. But uh, as thickly voiced as she was, she could speak common well enough. I think that's unusual. Was she a, a, a sea devil too, or was she another race? Well, she looked like them, as far as I could tell. Just a little bit more um, endowed, I guess you might say. I don't know how these these uh, these ones work. Both of you make an insight check. Oh, wait, I have my character sheet somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> I mean, I set it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> I just forgot it was open this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you could have just been clicking on things? Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
Um, Silas, although he seems to be speaking in generalities and in um, and portraying that he doesn't know much, you get the impression he knows a lot more than he's saying. Mm. Now, do you have a way out for us? Did you come down with some sort of magics? Uh, Silas? We have a small boat. <laughs> we have a rowboat up there, but uh, we'll need to find a way that the two of you can breathe on the way back. We're underwater, aren't we? I, I yes. kind of gathered that, but I hadn't had a chance to see anything. Do you, re do you recall how they brought you down? No, they, they choked me unconscious before I came down. Frankly, I was quite surprised to wake up. Shouldn't have caught me off guard. Silly mistake, I guess. Then again, the boat was pitching about 90 degrees, so I was doing well to keep on the deck as long as I did. The, the way we came in, there's uh, seaweed. Kind of scary seaweed. If you touch it, it hurts, and it'll wrap around you. And pro There's a lot of dead bodies in there. Sting that also look those clever bastards. That's why I wasn't able to. I mean, that's why they've never been seen this far before. Clever bastards. We'd have and to find a different exit, unless we all want to get severely injured or killed or snatched up by seaweed and staring up at passerby's for the rest of our lives. He points upward at the uh, at the, the the sphincter that's in this room. Um, don't suppose that would be a way out yeah but we might pop out in a pile of seaweeds hmm. well seaweed and not not breathing doesn't sound like a fun time to me well, uh, we should check what's in the other room there might be something there that could help agreed alright so you all reconvene yeah. in the other room yeah I'll look a little I mean, if we Just took the coin and already know everything that's in that chest, right? Yeah, it's 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 coin, uh, for the most part. There are there's a couple of small like a, a, a silver candlestick, and a uh, a goblet that seems to be made out of probably not actually gold, but has a couple of insight uh, in, insect jewels in it. So you get the impression that it it it, it is a a, a, a a crate full of money, uh, in which other a couple of other things have been thrown. Okay. You're not sure exactly how much. It is pretty heavy. You can try to drag it with you if you want, or you can leave it here for the moment. I'll leave it here for now. Okay. Um, the moment that I recognize his voice, uh, the voice, mm -hmm. and can't place it, I do turn my ring over so that the top is on the inside of my hand. Okay. Um, they all walk into the room now with the light. Uh, up to this point, you really haven't been able to see too much, except by Medric's innate glow. Um, when this fellow walks into the other room, uh, Annie, you do recognize this person. It's yes. unusual, because normally they would be, well, maybe dressed a little bit better. Although you get the feeling and you kind of know. You're, you're really sounding really hollow. Oh, You're sounding sorry. like a sea devil. It's like whoa, 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 <laughs> with the echo. <laughs> Peak role playing. <laughs> Let's see if that helps any. Does that help any? I, I, I can I, understand what you're saying, but you're still sounding weird. I think for the moment, Pat, if you can turn off your microphone, that might help. Uh, or just yeah, right now, you're very hollow to me. Yeah, well, I just I made my voice even more hollow, but. That that 100% helped. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think there's an echo. We're going to have to fix that. We'll figure out something for next week. Sorry, I'm going to chase my cat away from wires. <laughs> yes, okay. Recognize. So you definitely recognize this person, and you've seen them this way. This is the most casual of all the people you've, you've known of his stature. Uh, more a comfort on the deck of a swaying ship than in any sort of fancier circumstances. It looks a little bedraggled, but frankly, Uswin always looks a little bedraggled. 
but he definitely gave out the name Gitano before. Uh, you start looking through these. I'm kind of visibly kind of freaking out. <laughs> okay. I rolled a two on trying to not show emotion. Uh, Joan kind of shivers because she's still kind of holding on to you. And as at your nervousness, she starts to cry a little bit more and kind of bury herself into your shoulder. Uh, Gitano steps over to you as the other two are looking at the crates. In the crates, um, you're seeing a, a wide variety of goods that would have been on a ship. Um, one crate contains uh, what looks like oil, probably. Uh, it still seems to be somewhat sealed, but you can see the little edges around the outside, and there's a, a rough stem, stencil on it uh, indicating uh, lamp oil. Okay. There's another one which contains... Uh, what would it say? Actually, it would have Joan uh, Ibsen on it, stenciled. You get the impression it probably was her luggage boxed up, essentially, or her goods boxed up. Um, if, are you going to, you have, well, the crowbar is available to you, even if you don't have it on yeah. you, or you can use something. Do you want to open these crates? Yeah. Well, not the oil one, obviously, but. <laughs> Although, how big is the oil crate? Uh, it's about two feet tall, about a foot and a half uh, uh, radius. So, a pretty big, solid crate. All right. That might come in handy later. Um, you get the impression that, that, this is kind of uh, a, a room in which they've thrown anything that came down with a ship or would have slid off a ship. Uh, because the words stenciled on the outside are in common, uh, you don't know if uh, they uh, even understood what they were getting. And they probably dragged it all here maybe to take a look at later. You uh, crack open the crate that has Joan's name on it, and inside... <laughs> Somewhat waterlogged are bolts of cloth. Uh, it looks like it was fine cloth, but it's now full of uh, salty water, uh, stained a little bit. Uh, the, even the wood itself is still soaked, as if this room also gets regularly uh, uh, soaked in water. Okay. Uh, one of them is a barrel full of nails, small metal nails. Uh, solid, well-crafted, but... Nothing more than that. Uh, another one is uh, a uh, crate full of random tools. Looks like wood carving tools. So there's uh, lathes, there's uh, small knives, there's uh, hammers and, and uh, chisels and um, um, uh, not corkscrews, but uh, drills, hand drills, stuff like that. And most of this doesn't seem to be all that valuable necessarily. Uh, they, again, wouldn't necessarily have even known what they had. Okay. Um, Gaetano steps like... over to console Joan. It's all right, lass, you'll be fine. Oh, I don't I think we've... I can't turn my head. You certainly can. Uh, I don't think we've met. Uh, name's Gaetano, and he offers a hand to Annie. Uh, Annie. And he uh, shakes your hand. Um, where is... Do I detect while I'm uh, in investigating the crates? Do I detect the awkwardness that's going on over there? Or... <laughs> Not really, because your 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 head's really in the crates. Um... Uh, the handshake lingers a second or two, and uh, you. Uh, there's a flicker that crosses across uh, Gaetano's face. Uh, well, lucky we ran across you, uh, Annie. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no. What, what just happened? <laughs> he, he, st he straightens up and uh, turns back. Anything useful in those boxes? I don't know what the crew of the Errant Widow was carrying, but I don't think it was anything really fancy. Possibly there's oh, just a sec. There's oil, nails. If we can find small pots, we could possibly improvise some explosives that'll shoot out nails. I've seen them use on the battlefield. Uh, well, that's a terrifying prospect, kid, but I don't think that's exactly what I'm looking for. But if you've 
If you can find parts... Yeah, maybe. And nope, you proceed to c continue to open up. And there is indeed a, a full collection of uh, well-made uh, chamber pots. Uh, which are basically just metal pots, but they're stacked well. And other other uh, 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 sort of living room and living and bathroom and, and kitchen sort of utensils. Uh, you get the impression that someone is moving entire, their entire house almost. And it's pretty heavy, so it would have sunk pretty quickly. And he pulls out one of the chamber pots. Ah, good. It's not even been used. This will hold enough air to get us to the surface. Provided we we're careful about it. There was uh, no like if. The bends is a thing uh, in our world. <laughs> uh, it 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 sort of is. Um, you wouldn't have experienced it because you you kind of are able to maintain a pressure going down. Um, but for something like this, this deep, that would be kind of an issue if you're not careful. He seems confident about the idea, however. Now I don't know what you all have planned to do here, but I want to make sure that she's okay. You probably shouldn't go poking around anything that's too dangerous here, unless you have to. Unfortunately, we have to. What? If what brought you down? There's a young lady we have to rescue. Oh yeah, uh, the one with red hair, right? Do you know where they've taken her? Uh, not exactly, but I saw her briefly at one point. They didn't keep her with us. They seem to be treating her more like, well, to be honest, more like royalty. We're not really favored royalty, and looks over at, at Annie, if you know what I mean. I'm not sure what you you mean. Well, more like a prisoner, still like us, but a little more respect. I guess they didn't figure the drowning trick was going to work or something. Fair enough. They're also carrying a bright rock about this big, and I'll like motion to whatever the size of the rock was. Huh. Was that from the lighthouse? It was. Uh, that figures. They hate those things. The more ships that go down, the more they get a chance to feed on what's left over, I guess. Not surprised they took that, I suppose. Still, haven't been too many uh, sea devil attacks for a while. So I hear. If the lighthouse can't be restored, there will be more to come, definitely. Yeah. Um, well, look. I'd like to help you, but I don't think Joan can stand too much more time of this, and if there's more of those things coming in, uh, it's not safe for her here. I'd better get her back to the surface, but I can come back. Uh, Soonish, I guess. You say there's a boat up there somewhere? How big? How many crew? Um, it's, it's a, a rowboat. rowboat. The crew are all down here. It's oh. us. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a little easier to manage, maybe. And if you exit through these uh, sailing buttholes, then you're going to have a bad time because of the weeds. Right. I think there's, I think there's a front entrance that's probably not as dangerous to get through on the other side of the door. Uh, these old settlements, uh, as, as far as I remember from the tales I've heard, uh, yeah, there's usually some other space. Didn't expect the stingweed, though. That's that's unusual. Did you say there that's was oil? Hmm? Did you say there was oil? Yeah, in the crate over there. And I'll point to the barrel. Huh. Uh, if I could borrow your crowbar for a second. Sure. I'll pass him. Okay, right. Oh, you okay. No, you have it. I, I forgot I didn't. Yeah. He takes the crowbar from Annie winks, and then cracks across the top of the, the oil barrel. Ah! <laughs> Lamp oil. Perfect. You know, this stuff is sticky, right? It's really, really awful. You know, I spilled some once on a shirt, and I just had to burn the shirt. Couldn't get it out again. Well, I don't really care too much for this shirt, so this is probably going to work. And he sticks his hand in the barrel and start to slather the oil across his body. This is going to stink, but it'll work, I think. Uh, what are you doing? Can I figure out what he's doing? Uh, he appears to be bathing himself in oil. Good like the purpose behind it. 
mean, you could ask. Why? What are you doing? Stingweed hurts if it comes in contact with you, especially your skin. And don't don't ever you know eat the stuff. You'll be throwing up for a month. But this stuff, this stuff won't wash away, and it'll coat your skin. There should be enough of it that if I get it all over me, I can slip right through that shit. Although, oh. uh, got to be careful about it. And with the, with that uh, chamber pot, I'll have enough air to breathe, at least for a little while. Yeah. Well, with uh, a trusty good cutlass and a couple of careful cuts, well, I can probably make uh, good work out of one of those... What did you call it? Buttholes. <laughs> That's a good one. I gotta remember that one. They are a little more difficult to open than one would think. You're uh, you're muted, uh, Pat. I'm probably muted. Uh, how is she going to deal with this? Well, if I can clear enough away of those uh, the stingweeds uh, and keep them at bay, then. I should be able to float her right up to the surface. Another one of those, um, um, another one of those chamber pots full of air should be enough if I can keep her calm enough. Still worth trying. Uh, oh, it might be safer if you just stuck around with us until we can find the main entrance. Well, yeah, I suppose. No, now if I'm you stay behind my... us, you should be reasonably safe. Oh, I'm not worried about my safety. Those buggers plucked me out of the sea and knocked me on the back of the head. That's not going to happen twice. At least not today. But uh, Joan yep. needs protecting. Does... I'll ask Joan, do you have any combat experience at all? And she kind of pulls herself out of, out of Annie's shoulder and looks up at you fearfully. No! I've never fought anybody in my life. I just want to go home. Well, we'll get you home. Swimming. What was that, uh, Marie? Are you okay at swimming? I mean, I, I, I swim a little bit. I'm not usually dressed up like this. But Is there uh, a change of clothes in that crate that would be of more use? You search around, there, there is a small crate with clothing in it. Uh, it's all waterlogged and, and uh, salt and crusted, but it is there. You might want to change into something more convenient. Use the other room if you want, like, and I'll just point to the other room where she can like change, and nobody else is going to see her. Like. And uh, she kind of nods her head and takes the... It looks like a pair of breeches, um, some sort of... Uh, 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 chemise as well, shirt. Um, and she moves off to the other room to change. Um, kind of looks over her shoulder a couple of times and looks around and, and kind of realizing that this room that she's going into, the, the room that she's been caged for a while, uh, at least there aren't any of those creatures here, living or dead. I'll, I'll offer to go with her if she wants. She grabs on your yeah. hand and pulls yeah. you with her. <laughs> yep. Um, and in, in fact, it's actually difficult because of the way that the, the, the clothing is made and knotted in the back. It's difficult for her to even reach and untie some of these really tight and now waterlogged knots. So she kind of needs your help as well. I'll definitely, definitely help her. As you move into the other room, Gaetano looks at you. So, lad, what's the plan then? If we're sticking with you, then I want to know what you might think we're going to be doing. We're going to rescue their other prisoner with the red hair. And if we find, when we find the glowing rock, we'll take that as with us as well. And then we'll find the exit and be out of here. Well, that all sounds Did you pretty good. you find any uh, clay pots or pots that have, like, no to the DM, the pots I'm thinking of, I'm not sure like what the name is to, to describe them. They're like, like this, and they have like a small neck. I think they're called like amphoras. Like a wine pot? Like a what? Like, like old ones that, like they would pour wine from yeah decanter no no I, I think it's called an amphora okay yes yes I think so. um but yeah like what i'm thinking is like 
pour some oil inside the pots and nails as well and like take a little bit of cloth and just light that up and throw it into a room to clear out bad guys uh there just aren't any the... we are trying to Is find explosive what just remember we are trying to find someone still yeah but if we like run into a difficult situation and there's like a room full of bad guys and no allies then like whoosh <laughs> make sure fireball yeah <laughs> well uh... I mean, lamp oil doesn't burn, doesn't explode. Damn it. It's a heavy, <laughs> sticky oil that's meant to burn slowly. Damn. Um, you do find some small amphoras. They seem to be filled with, uh, uh, they're still stoppered, in fact. And if you open one of them up, you discover it's actually wine. Cool. Do you drink it? I'll smell it. it smells sweet. Kind of fruity. Overtones of, uh, of jasmine. Sure. Hey, Gaetano, uh, wine? Oh, that's where that went to. And he takes it from you and takes a swig. Ah, no profit for me today, but that feels good. Seeing him take a swig and not make a face, I'll also take a swig after he's done. <laughs> not a get drunk swig, just like a it's been a day kind of swig. <laughs> They make it into Wilka. Uh, it's made from a kind of berry that's there. I, I've heard it said that they also, well, there may be a, a, a dead animal or two that's made that's mixed in with it. I'm not sure how that part works, but Lovely. it's not part of the sales pitch for the most part. Some of the stuff I was bringing over, uh, if there's only this much here, that means that most of the cargo thankfully survived. I think they put a hole in the ship or something. I'm not sure. The errant widow wasn't looking good when I left it. Um, well, I'm, uh, I'm helping Joan here. Um, I'm going to try to, like, console her and, like, I'm going to tell her that, like, I definitely, uh, Gaetano seems like someone you definitely can trust to get you, to get you back safe. And she's, she's nervous at first, but the, just you being with her and, and just the two of you alone, even in this dim room... Um, she seems to calm down a little bit, and part of it, I think, is also that you're kind of peeling off these this these layers of clothing that have been repeatedly uh, soaked and then dried and then soaked and then dried and kind of have a, a little bit of salty crust on them and a little bit of that that that, uh, that pinching nature from some of the ways it was tied up, and so she starts to to uh, be a little more comfortable. Um, she she's very modest, even even though it's just kind of in privacy. Um, and you can see that uh, she's uh, uh, a little, a little nervous, but uh, kind of nodding. Oh, Gaetano is beautiful. I mean, I mean, nice. I mean, one. I mean, <laughs> his being on the trip was a lot of a. It made it go faster. He's a wonderful storyteller. He's been all over. It sounds like. Uh, yeah. Some sort of merchant, I guess. Um, but he told the stories of the sea and the places he's been. And he's talking about these sea monsters. He kept asking the, cre the crew about sea monsters. Like if they'd seen any recently or, or if there have been any ships that had gone down. I, I guess this is the sort of thing he was looking for. And it's sad to say that he found it. Fair enough. Sometimes trouble will find you instead of you finding trouble. <laughs> Now you're just sounding like my husband. He wrote to me a while ago and said that I, I shouldn't come just yet. There were still things to be done, but I couldn't wait. You know how it is, don't you? Definitely. I'm looking forward to seeing him. He's, he's set up work in, in Pitajun. He's a tailor, and, and I, I sew most of the stuff for him. And he said there would be bigger business in Pitta June, so finally. I'll definitely once we're out of all of this, I'll definitely try to get something from you guys. Oh, that'd be so nice. Holger would be pleased. That's my husband. Holger? Holger. H O L G E R. Yeah. So what are you thinking, lad, with these uh these amphora. 
I'm pretty sure you didn't want to just have the wine. Uh, how about you, um, Mr. I don't think I caught your names. Hi, I'm Medrick. Medrick, good to meet you. And he, he kind of clasps you in a, in a familiar way that uh, is kind of the the forearm to forearm grasp at the at the uh, at the elbows very firm grasp and you kind of get this impression like his grip would be really strong he's got very large forearms and, and kind of very uh, uh, immediately sort of comfortable nature to him and he extends his hand to, to you Silas the Silas Marsh sir make an insight check He uh, shakes your hand, hand to hand in this particular case, not full, full uh, uh, lean in uh, uh, arm bar. Silas the nine Marsh. Was meant to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Silas Marsh, eh? Well, nice to meet you. Uh, you said you came from the lighthouse, eh? We were there, yes. Uh, well. They were turned for the sea devils. Well, hopefully we'll get you back to your lighthouse soon enough. So you were saying the amphoras, you're going to put oil in them, eh? Yes. Is this kind of oil explosive? Nah, it kind of coats in, everywhere. It's something explosive and nails. If we get attacked by too many creatures, we can light this on fire and lob it at them. Well, I mean, you could certainly try that. I don't know. I guess we've got some cloth there we can use to light on fire. This stuff doesn't, doesn't explode so much as just burn forever. Uh, if you're going to try something like that, don't don't light me on fire. I just spent some time trying to keep myself safe from that stingweed, thinking I was getting the hell out of here. And I'm going to be coated for a while yet. Well, there is a lot of water, so you'll get uncoated in no time, I'm sure. You know, that's the point of putting this stuff on, is it sticks to your skin. It doesn't wash off that easily. You can use it to go underwater diving sometimes, too. Pearl diving. I've done that before. That's a lot trickier than, I suppose, what we're going to be doing with the stingweed, but this stuff keeps your skin nice and coated, keeps you warm. Was there any more, any uh, stronger alcohol in that crate by any chance? Well, you want the good stuff. That explodes. You want the good stuff, do you? All right. Let me get digging around. He digs around in one of the other crates. And the, the crate seems to be filled with uh, what looks like what were books, but the crate got flooded, and now it's kind of a mushy pile of pulp. Uh, and he kind of it pushes aside. In the future, Zach just weeps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, he kind of pushes I'm aside. Some... Wait two seconds. Okay. Pushes aside some of those and comes back with a couple of smaller bottles. These are made of a thick glass. It's a thick green glass. Now this stuff will put the put the hair on your head, and everywhere else for that matter. <laughs> kind of carefully hands them over to you. You can see he's actually having to grip it fairly tightly because his hands are still covered in that oil. And when you take the bottle from him, it's a little slippery from, from where he was handling it. Now that stuff, that'll light on fire. Now these All are right. tall, and thin bottles, about about a foot tall, only a few inches around in diameter. Thick glass, stoppered with wax over a uh, cork. Cool. It's got a, right, a symbol so on the outside. Hang on to those. How, how many bottles are there? Just one or two? Or... Just two. Okay. So I'll hang on to those in case we need them. All right, yeah. lad. How do you want to do this? Do what? You're, uh, you're muted still. Me? No, uh, Pat. Oh. Uh... I can try disguising myself and sneaking ahead as before, but uh, you can disguise yourself. You that's, that's pretty handy. If uh, if I've not missed my guess, Medric, judging from the slight glow, <laughs> you're Kmar, aren't you? Yes. Ah. How do you know about that? Here. Ah, you know, I've been all over. I've seen all kinds. Don't often see too many of your kind, though. Gamar have been pretty rare for a while. Most followers of Ignis are rare in, a. Uh... wow, I forgot the name of the island. Brain, please. Eskis? <laughs> yes. 
Or at least an elf otter. Yeah, I can imagine so. You guys get a bad reputation. Maybe it's because of all the fire, I suppose. <laughs> but, uh, but it is useful. Yeah, well, the sun's never me done me much harm. Uh, the sun burned from time to time, but I suppose I probably, I probably earned that. <coughs> you managed to get uh, Joan changed into these other clothes. They're actually a little bit drier. The uh, crate that they were stored in was sealed fairly well. Um, but definitely compared yeah, to kind of middle <laughs> <laughs> compared to the the uh, the clothing that have been repeatedly uh, dunked, it's much, much better um, and much more maneuverable. She just kind of look at the dress and kind of sadly point out, oh, this is going to take so long to repair. This is one of the ones I made myself. I can I suppose I can I fix the holes. I can put it in my bag if you if you'd like. I wouldn't want you to carry this. It's it's big and bulky. That was the point of getting changed, anyway, after all. I suppose I can leave Fair it enough. here. Uh, I can make another one, I, I guess. She kind of sets it down and kind of lays it out almost, uh, uh, you know, almost reverently. Um, Holger loved that dress, but I'll make him another one. I'll make me another one. He doesn't... It doesn't I, it's lovely. I miss him. I'm sure you do. I miss my family, too. Oh? Where are you from? I'm from Alaria. Oh, I've never been there. Is it beautiful? I hear it's beautiful. It really is. <sighs> I, I, I miss it a lot. Well, maybe you'll get a chance to go back someday. Probably sooner than I'd like. I thought you said it was lovely. It is. But not when you don't have many options to see things oh. and experience things for your yourself. Well, I've experienced way too much in this one voyage at sea. I have no desire to see any more. <laughs> That's fair. So, Medric, right. you're assembling together these makeshift bombs? Yep, and I'm going to ask, like, uh, Silas, hey, Silas, do you have any idea what the precise measurements for these are? I've seen them done on the battlefield, but I, I've never made them myself. I have very little idea what you're doing. All right, so I'll explain to Silas, like, what my thought process is. I'll take the smaller flasks and put a few nails on them, then fill it with alcohol, which will explode, and put a piece of cloth in the neck of the bottle. I've so never that seen way, alcohol explode. What? I mean, it burns. Um. Well, it's not gunpowder, if that's what you're looking for. No. I'm essentially but, trying to make like a Molotov cocktail with nails in it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that would. Uh... I mean, to be honest. It's not something I've seen before, but uh, yeah, if you if you fill it up with alcohol, then uh, I mean, you'd have to light it. Uh, the explosion radius has, say, a, a magical fireball, but it would stop an opponent for sure and light them on fire. Now, do we want to start burning this place? Uh, we might want to use those maybe on our way out. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, it looks interesting to me, but uh, uh, yeah, you have way more experience with it than I do. Um, Yeah, I don't think Silas would really have anything he could actually contribute to that. He's never thought about making incendiary devices. Nedrick has thought about it very often. <laughs> what Although, can go boom? Yeah, not, not usually <laughs> outside like the of the plane under the ocean. <laughs> um, let's call this a... Let's call this a survival roll. All right. To put these together. 
character sheet. Did I close it accidentally? <laughs> I did not. Okay. Yep. Okay, you're pretty sure you got something oh. together. How many of them do I have? Because I know there was two bottles of hard alcohol and a few more flasks. Well, not flasks, small amphoras. And there's four yeah, of the amphoras. small amphoras that are made of clay and the two mm -hmm. glass bottles. So you take some of the, the cloth and kind of rip it into shreds, stuff it in the bottles, throw a few nails in there. Uh, Gaetano kind of winces a little bit and then smiles. Well, I mean, I suppose it's going to a better purpose right now, but that was some good alcohol. Oh, well, well it's only money, and I can make more of that. At least now we're going to live to have more alcohol in the future. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess that's true. All right, kid. And so you assemble together what you believe are six of these. Cool. When you use them, please specify whether it's one of the glass ones or one of the clay ones. They're a little awkward to carry around with you, but the way that you can... Uh, Gaetano actually uh, helps you to shove more cloth than is needed into the bottles, basically sealing them with the cloth. Cool. But then says, but... Make sure you pull it out a little bit. Give it a little air to breathe or it won't burn. I did not of, know that part, but I'll keep his advice in mind. <laughs> it's kind of like a little a little lamp is what you're making. Just a lamp that you're going to intentionally break on the floor. Okay. Thanks. I'll do that. Andy, do you and bring... The uh, fire will probably still help. <laughs> do yeah. you bring Joan back in, <laughs> Annie? Yeah. She kind of straightens herself up. She's dried her tears off. She kind of follows back behind you. Ah. We've got. Looking much better. Much easier to swim in that get up anyway. Definitely. Who mentioned burning the entire place on the way out? <laughs> I think. Silence, that... technically. <laughs> I think it's not that was fun, but it's the closest thing. So I definitely we... would want to make sure that we have Harriet before. Definitely. Like, after we've retrieved all the objects and people we were after, to make sure the Sea Devils can't use this as a base anymore, I was thinking we can carry the crate of oil with us, leave a trail on our way out, and just light one end of it, and the whole place will burn. Um, well... I mean, As this place is made of stone, right? In water. But there's air. Uh, yeah, some of the... Gaetano just gave me this idea by, by saying the fire needed air. Mm-hmm. Well, some of the plants down here do make air. You find those when you're pearl diving, too. But uh, I think they'll stop once they're burning. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Um... I'm guessing we did pick up, like, the, the coin and stuff. It's still sitting there unless you guys specifically yeah. take it. It's pretty We've heavy. left it because it's, like, a, a heavy chest, but, yeah. If we people want to bring it. Then... That's getting confiscated from the Sea Devils. Are you discussing that out loud? I, I, I would mention. Well, I think I... it's the tax coin from the town or something. It must have come off the, the uh, Aaron Widow. I'm sure they'll be looking for it. At least if we can bring what we carry. What yeah. we can carry. And there's six of us, so if we split it roughly equally, then we can all carry it back. In the, the new clothing that Joan is wearing, you also kind of realize that Joan is a lot smaller than you had thought before. The... The clothing was large and now slimmed down to the very clothing. Uh, she's shorter than Annie at this point and a lot thinner she as well. Tall. Oh, right. Sorry. Annie is tall. I keep forgetting that. I don't know why I keep thinking I'm that. short. Yeah. She's shorter than Marie. <laughs> 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 to, use a, to use a weird out-of-game reference. No, whenever I play tall characters, people are like, always think that I'm playing short characters. I'm like, no. Yeah. Only half of my characters have beards. 
It's a little confusing. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Well, we should uh, we should get going carefully. These places are often warrants down here, so I know. Um, and he walks over towards the door beside Silas and just goes ahead and presses a couple of stones. Uh, generally, the doors don't open unless one of the other ones is closed. Does somebody want to go and close that door behind us, one into the other room? Sure. And I'm wondering, like, how, do you, how does he know that? And uh, do you ask him, or do you just wonder it? <laughs> And as you grab yeah, a hold of the, the after handle, I close, I'll go close to the door, like press buttons, and hope it works. Yeah. Well, as you and... as you go close to this door and, and go to, go to close it, it moves easily. Um, and you hear a click from the other side. Uh, I've read about these places. Uh, long ago, the CLs used to build places like this to hold uh, parlay with people on land. They can control the water in each of the chambers, make sure that people don't get flooded out. Or, if they're not going so well in the parlay, I guess they could flood them. I didn't think too many of these places lived anymore. Well, I guess this one doesn't, technically. Well. Well, let's get going. All right, so you file into the hallway? Yep. It's so much easier to press the buttons than it is to, like, lift the doors physically. Um, if only we knew this like five doors ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joan will follow along the, the back, uh, but behind her will be um, Gaetano. It's kind of protective of her, so he's sticking nearby her. I'll he's... stay in front of her. Okay. Um, you're muted, Pat. Silas is going to look back at them, or at the two uh, civilians, and uh, say, uh, I'm going to make myself look like one of them. Uh, I am still me. Uh, please do not be scared. I would suggest making yourself look like one of the ones that we killed mm -hmm. instead of the one that, went, that ran away, because we still haven't seen that one yet. So that guy might be around. Yep. Yep, he'll make it one of the ones from this, the first ones we encountered, okay. one of the other two. The larger of the two or the smaller of the two? The smaller one was a deep green, the larger one was a lighter green. Yeah, smaller of the two. Okay. Closer to his size. Uh, and your form shifts, and Joan, even having been warned, still kind of takes a sharp intake of breath. You hear behind her, uh, Gaetano laugh. Oh, good trick, kid. Uh, and then he's he's going to basically uh, he's a, stay like thirty or forty feet back from me, uh, just so they don't see you and and whatnot. And we'll see how far we can get. Yeah, do you want to just put put your icon like uh, where mine was? Mm hmm. Yeah, I'll, he'll be going through the door. So okay. Matter temporarily like blips out of existence. <laughs> well. uh, yeah. <laughs> now that you kind of understand a bit better about the, how the doors work, it's a lot easier to maneuver through them. You pass back through that door you came in before. Now looking towards the other branch, you, uh, well, actually Gaetano would point out, um, only one door in an area can be open at any one time. So make sure the other doors are closed so they'll all be weighted against you. And then oh, Magic, okay. you kind of realize, yeah. oh yeah, when the other yeah, door was I also open, close the door and then open the new one. Yeah, I, that's it, why I couldn't get them open. That's why there was so much more weight behind him, as it was actually preventing you from opening the door, which in hindsight makes a lot more sense because it means that you won't have a flood in more than one space. You get into that second space, uh, Silas, and you realize it's a really narrow, small corridor. How you can cram yourselves in there it's going to be very very uncomfortable uh, or you could go in two waves that would be up to you guys I think uh, yeah. two waves might be the safer option yeah alright who's in the first wave no 
Nobody? If okay. I go in the first wave, I'm going to give away Silas's illusion probably pretty easily. <laughs> yeah. Well, nobody should be in the, the one with me. Everyone should be behind. Uh, I just have to check uh, if I can talk to you guys. If it's message, it'll go around doors, but it won't pass through uh, solid surfaces, I believe. No, nope, mine requires seeing. Okay. Might want to move the camera. Oh yeah, thank you. It's it's weird to have to think in two different ver uh, views at the same time. Uh, so, good. as you pass through this door, uh, Silas, you will see. It's easy to see the other end of the hallway for you. Um, Medrick, are you still carrying a light? Yeah, I would have. Um, well, I didn't specifically say, but like if one runs out, I'll just light up another object. Well, you, you had one. Your that, own or, you had one or that you level. had created and thrown down on the floor back in the other room. So yeah, we can uh, just assume I picked it up. Okay, um, because. You can see in the dark. Uh, it doesn't look like uh, the rest of them can. Although Silas seems to be making his way pretty well. Um, so you carrying the light may or may not work, depending on how you it up. Surprisingly well, in fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so who's entering the small chamber? Actually, I guess Silas was going to enter this chamber alone. Are you going to then close this door and open the other door and go in alone? Yes. Okay. So, Medric, you come up to the door and Silas closes it in front of your face. Jerk. And then <laughs> the four of us should be able to fit in that room. Yeah. It'll still be a bit of a squeeze, but less if we were trying to cram five in. I'll give yeah. the light to uh, Joan because she can like help light the place for the other ones, whereas I can see in the dark. She, she kind of holds on to the finger and kind of weird kind of Here, holds hold it at distance. Bone. Yeah, she, at first it's, it's like, bone. oh. Pull my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, ah! Um, <laughs> at, at first it's it's kind of like, oh, look, shiny and, and pretty and beautiful and light. Is that a finger? Oh my god, that's a finger. Uh, and so she kind of it's looks light. a little bit nervously at it. Um, uh, after each door that Silas goes through, he'll close it so that they can open the door behind him okay. fairly soon. Medric, you, you kind of are ready to open the door, and you can kind of feel when the handle goes from stiff to suddenly pliable. Okay. And that you realize is the, the clue that this door has been unlocked, and you pull I... up on it. Doo -doo -doo. Open. Um, and all of you kind of cram in very tightly <laughs> into this tiny little room. Actually, probably this way. It's just barely big enough to hold the four of you. Now, Silas, you see two rooms in front of you. Which direction are you going? Well, Silas is completely unsure, so... Hmm. Uh... What do you mean they don't have a D2 here? Okay. Uh... <laughs> really? Uh... Yeah, there's a D2. Just do odd oh. reasons. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the. Uh, I'm just thinking. Yeah, uh, odds will be uh, south, evens will be east. South it is. Okay, so you head down the long hallway. Uh, go to open the door, and it opens in front of you. So someone else opened it? You don't see anybody on the other side. Yeah, but you said I went to open it and it opened in front of me. Did I actually open it? Or you were reaching down for it? the handle and it opened on its own. Okay. I take a look around. Looks like the, the uh, room branches off in two different hallways. I shall move through the door so they can uh, get into the next uh, section. Okay. You move to close the door. It seems solid. Give me an athletics roll. It seems to be holding firm. Hmm. 
I look for buttons to press. <laughs> Make an investigation roll. Meanwhile, what are the rest Make of you sure doing? You're not standing under the door, by the way. <laughs> it's it's been a while, Medric, and he should have been able to let the door open, but it feels like it's still hooked. It feels like it's still got the weight on it. Gaetano calls in the back. What's up, kid? The door should have unlocked by now. No, that's not good. Get looking... past Medric the crowbar. <laughs> He's got us this bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Silas, you're looking around, and there are lots of little rocks here, and you start to press them at random, but nothing seems to move. You hear a voice in your head. Come, Zagling. Come forward. I'm eager to meet you. It's a feminine voice. The crowbar is under the door. <laughs> okay. Mm. Have I heard this term, Zagling, before? It feels resonant, but you're not familiar with it. Actually, sorry, make a history check. Hey. Oh, wow, okay. At first, it, it doesn't seem familiar, and then you kind of remember the name Zagwatha, who is the great serpent of the sea. It's a mythical name. Hmm... Well, uh, I don't think they can get in any further while this door is open, so I will uh, head in further. I just got to figure out which side. They both look pretty uh, much the same, although you can see that the one on the left from you, uh, from your perspective, is a little bit shorter. Yeah, he'll go left. All right. Um, you hear the door behind you closing, and as you get the crowbar in place, the uh, the the door uh, unlatches, and you kind of find yourself practically throwing the door open wide. Uh, you put a lot more of your back into it, and suddenly made it look really really easy, as it probably half moved on its own. Swing it open. Yeah. It's I don't like, tell anybody else that. <laughs> you go to open like a screen door, and it like the wind catches it. Yeah. yeah. Oh god. Like superpower <laughs> for a second. Um, and you find yourself in a hallway with two doors. There's no indication that either one has anything different about them. Well. Um, I'm assuming the rest of you pile into the room. Yo. Do we see any footprints? Make an investigation check. Like wet footprints. There are most definitely lots of footprints here, traveling in both directions. Um. The door opens in front of you, Silas. Silas realizes now he should have maybe taken some colored pebbles or something to drop along the way. <laughs> Um, and Silas will walk through. Okay. As you move through the door, there's a slight glow up ahead, a greenish glow that seems to be tinged with something purplish, maybe. Um, you find your feet passing through, and there's a cold air that, uh, that seems to permeate the room. You can feel your breath, and you feel the, the, uh, the skin prickle a little bit. Uh, I shouldn't say that guy's not there. That was just a me getting him off the board. That one's not there. Uh, um, on our end, I would say let's just roll odds evens with the same. There's no indication of which way to go. Do any of the buttons look like they've been tampered with? Play rock, paper. <laughs> <laughs> Scissors haven't been invented yet. Uh, rock, see. paper, cutlass. Okay, so what was it? Even Boulder, is paper, shears. East and odd is south. Sounds good. Right. Even east, odd south. God damn it. 
Nice. Oh, we're going the other way. <laughs> okay, the door opens easily. You see uh, the the room, uh, the hallway has a large bend in it towards another hallway. And you all pile into that room. As you enter the room, Silas, you see two figures. One, uh, as kind of described a little bit earlier by Gaetano, a sort of feminine version of the sea devils, standing taller um, with legs that are a lot smaller, but the tail is a lot bigger and broader. Around this figure, you see a swirl of, of dark ooze that seems to have almost a, an intelligence, a mobility of its own that gathers around her. Off to the other side, you see a bigger, brutish version of the sea devil. This one with four mighty arms and carrying a trident, which he handles with two hands, that has small gem-encrusted elements in the edges of it and a large chain at the other end, which attaches around his waist. Pretty. So, Zagling, now we can properly talk. And with that, I think I'm going to call it for tonight. Uh. <laughs> As the rest of you pile off and go into the other direction. What do we see? You see a slim hallway that curves around and another door. Yay, doors. <laughs> open? It's not Press open. button. It's not, you, you can't open it. That'll be next week. Okay. Damn it. <laughs> I... I'm, I'm right eager to see a whole pile of nothing. <laughs> I'm right at the edge of my energy. I will say that, uh, uh, you know, getting up in the morning and doing these shows a couple of hours earlier than I'm used to being alive is a lot harder for me. <laughs> but uh, but uh, you guys got to an interesting place. You met some interesting people. And now I didn't plan this, but it's an interesting separation that I'm going to take advantage of and make for interesting drama. I'm not fighting. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what the outcome of that particular experience is next week. Uh, as uh, we will gather once again, um, I think we'll have actually made a full month of it, which hasn't happened uh, for a while. Um, we will see what the schedule brings. We are looking at the potentiality of summer ending, <laughs> or at least the hottest part of summer ending, if that's the case. We may move back to our original time. Uh, in which all of us get a chance to sleep in on Sunday, uh, yeah. which would be 2 p.m. Yeah. Uh, Atlantic time. We'll see if that actually happens. Uh, or actually, we used to gather at 4, didn't we? Anyway, we'll, we'll see. Um, you can find out more by going to Legends of the Drowned Isles on Facebook. We have a Facebook page. I think it's even facebook.com slash L-O-T-D-I. Weirdly enough, I think that's what we set up to be. We have all that in the end page as well with the end credits. Uh, you can find these if you're watching them live. Hey, oh look, Harry Potter is my, is my wife. <laughs> is in the chat room. Uh, DM's beard gives plus three to gravitas, advantage on intimidation. Oh, thank you. <laughs> nice. uh, I will try to remember that. Thank you for watching on Twitch, <laughs> twitch.tv slash ENCAF1. We do stream on Sundays. Um, for the time being, and probably next week, it'll still be the early time, which is uh, 11 a.m. Atlantic time. That's, uh, uh, it goes forward? No, backwards. It'll be 10 a.m. Eastern time and like 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. if you're in California. But if you're in Europe, we're in the perfect afternoon slot for you. But don't worry if you don't catch it live, which we do appreciate. Uh, then you can uh, check us out on, on uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash ENCAF1, ENCAF1, uh, where all the uh, previous episodes, including from this series and from the post uh, postponed, no, uh, temporarily uh, suspended main series, which we hope to get back to once we Beyond can. Beyond hiatus. <laughs> on, on hiatus, so we uh, can social distancing and internets and all kinds of things make trouble. But for the time being, the great confusion, a thousand years before, for this session. Uh, that's it for all of that, I believe. Oh, there's also Watchers of the Drowned Dials. We haven't really promoted that or done too much with it. And I'm building a World Anvil site to try to contain some of the world building stuff that I've been doing. We shall see how all that works out for now. Uh, nonetheless, thank you for watching. And we will play yeah. it again next week. I think that's it. Is there anything, something else I should say? There's probably something else I should say. Ring the bell to subscribe on YouTube. Right. And Watchers of the Drowned Isle is on Facebook. Facebook. 
The Book of Faces. The Book of Faces. Until next week. I need a sign-up. We still haven't done the sign-up. Goodbye. I'll see you then. See ya.